the map pool breaks down. Here, it is really a, just an even match between both of these teams, and it's a perfect map to start on. Well, we're ready with our Arby's map fly through, headed into overpass. It's going to be a best of three game, so you better strap in because this is going to be a really tough best of three. Whether whether it finishes 2-0 or it's going to be 1-2 or one of the other ways, I feel like this is going to be a great matchup. So I'm definitely ready for it. It looks like Astralis are going to be starting on the T side and it will be SK on the CT side. And we got the shotgun to start us off. Countdown has begun. We're getting to the round. Astralis on the T side, SK on the CT side, and already we actually have quite a group over towards that B side for, for SK, rather. They thought that this was going to be a B rush, but Astralis are not taking that route at all. Straight over to Long as a group, leaving only Glaive alive in mid right now for Astralis to see if he can't cause some chaos, and he gets spotted immediately. This is so interesting because it's almost the opposite of what they did previously. The other time they had four men stacked by connector and, and restrooms and there's one in B. Now they did the mirror opposite. Let's see if it's going to be working out. Fur goes down immediately. That's Kirby opening up with a shot, but a great return from Fallen. And another one taking down Dupree, dropping both right off the bat. And now we're in a 4v3, but the really big thing is Taco. He's on the flank and he's been the whole round already walking up behind the Danish team. Seems like they might have some kind of an idea for this. It's all about patience, though. They need to start hitting some shots to actually clear out this site. Device whips around, expecting some kind of flank to come through that nobody has spotted Taco just yet. But the two remaining players here, fairly healthy for SK Gaming, apart from FNX. But he doesn't need to show himself. It's Fallen who's taking point on this fight. And just a little bit of a shoulder peek there to confirm that Device hasn't changed up his position. What is this? He instantly goes and he hunts down Taco. Such an important kill for Device. Now he can get onto the site. They have got to be really careful right now. This is all about the one clicks. Everybody has a USP. Only nine bullets left for a device, though, in this one. And even worse, 25 seconds on the clock. This is not easy. He tries one and again, but it's not going to happen. FNX will close out the round. Cold Zero got a double kill of his own in that one. And SK will pick up the lead here. At this beginning from Fallen, especially after they lose Fur, is so important. And this is going to be instrumental for an SK win here in this sort of scenario. Cold does pick up his two kills here, as we see on the replay. But what's important here, and there was a lot of emphasis at the, on the desk, was talking about SK Gaming's CT side and how they need to have a dominant one. Well, you start off strong, SK Gaming. You didn't guess right at the beginning with your setup, but you were still able to withstand the Astralis push, and you start off with the pistol round on your side for CT. So a 1-0 lead now for SK Gaming. And Kirby looked like he had a chance there to take a little bit of a shot, but he wasn't able to pull the trigger fast enough. <laughs> hey. He tried. He gave it his best then, but not quite going to be working out. We do have four UMPs on the SK side and just a single M4 there on FNX. I still think it's a risk. I still think it's dangerous. But SK are obviously a very confident team these days. So they're just, I think they're just playing into that right now. Not worried at all. You know, they got to make money outside of the game. They have to make money inside the game, Anders. Get those UMPs. And Device has managed to work his way up here, but Fallen realizes perhaps that somebody could have worked behind him now. And there is going to be the rotation from FNX. Device is in position, but Fallen could peek this, and he is going to force Device off the angle. Device with a spray, and he's not going to get the kill. Fallen makes it back to the A site. And a man advantage now for SK Gaming. Bit of a shame. I mean, it's great to be able to get that close to your target if you're Device, but um, the strafe shooting there with the UMP is pretty powerful. They do have armor on the Astralis side, so need to get at least a couple of kills in this round for, for it to be worth it. If they get a kill and a bomb plant, that's good. If they get two kills and no bomb plant, that's even acceptable. But if they get nothing out of it, it's definitely a big investment into a round that doesn't really go anywhere. You see Fallen now being smoked off for the moment, but Fur on the other side will now the kill on Dupree. Bomb plant, is it going to happen? No, it's going to be denied. They only lose Fallen. It's a great round for SK. Excellent round. That's as good as it gets if you're SK. He, I mean, and it's worth it. It's worth it for Fallen to try and take that peak. If he can stop that bomb from going down, it's like you said. If Astralis get that bomb plant and the bonus is $800, they're feeling pretty good about that round. Fallen looking to do maximum damage there. And he only throws away a UMP in the process. So not the end of the world for him to go and die. It's a 2-0 lead now for SK Game, and you can see that money not quite taking off just yet, but hey, now it's going to be a hard eco from Astralis. So these, S these UMPs, they get a real chance to shine here. A bit of a slow start coming out of the Danish side, we have to admit. Device has picked up a P250, so maybe he could uh, pull something out of the hat. But without the armor, it's just not realistic to try and win a round like this one. 
And you are right, though. It's true what you're saying and what the desk was saying, too. This, the T sign on this map for SD last time around was looking fairly miserable. So we, we really want them to pick up a good 10 or 11 rounds on this first half, just to be sure, just to make sure ah. you've got it in the bag. They just need as much of a margin of, for error as possible on SK's side. You can be sure that SK, I mean, they're going to be aware of this sort of scenario, and they'll have tried to at least get some tweaks going on that T side. So it might be a little bit stronger, but I mean, it was almost non-existent the first time we saw them play it in the quarterfinals. So um, that is something that's going to be weighing on SK, just a little bit of additional pressure. If Astralis start to mount an offense, and if they actually start picking up some rounds, that's where we're really going to have to keep an eye on SK Gaming to see if they can keep their pool, given the knowledge that we have now. A little bit of a shot there from FNX to take down Device. And Glaive, last man standing here for Astralis. Not looking too good for him either. I mean, well played by FNX. Actually, that's a little bit silly from FNX. I mean, that's a little frag hungry. Because you have a teammate. He's going to get that kill with the UMP. He's going to make an extra $300. Why are you getting that kill with the, with the rifle apart from just being frag hungry? frag hungry? The whole round is about making money. He's just into it. They are talking a little bit, so maybe that's what they were discussing. You know? <laughs> Give me the kills, please. It's 5 and 0 right now for FNX, and he's actually in the quarterfinals. He was a little bit absent for some of those games, right? So maybe that could be why. Maybe it's good news that he's sort of stepping it up a little bit. Here comes the real question: Can Astralis do anything in a round? Now they've got the AKs, they've got a lot of smokes. Only the one Molotov on Sip already being put up onto uh, short. I have to expect, and maybe he can uh, force a little bit of movement around there for SK. In the meantime, fall in real close range. Gonna get the shot on Kirby, trying to fall back. He's down at 20 health. But he will make it around the corner. Astralis unable to punish that aggression. Nah, that's not good enough from Astralis. Instead, they try and wrap. Device is working his way all the way up long. Seems like he wants to try and get here fast enough, but he's going to hear those footsteps, it sounds like. So not able to get in here to punish. And that's a free kill for Fallen. He's taking quite a bit of damage, sure. But with that AWP, he can play a close angle where it's going to be really hard to hit the shot on him. But hey, he's going to be fine. He's going to have the sniper rifle. One shot, one kill if he gets that body shot. So. Difficult turn of events here for Astralis, actually. Being a man down in this round, they really need to have an impact in this round, I think, Astralis. If they don't get the kills, at least, I mean, if they don't get the round, at least they get the kills. No, you're definitely right. That's what they need to do. And I'm wondering, you see Fallen and Fur going up with a little bit of boost down behind the truck. Are they realizing how far up Device is pushed? I don't think they are. Good grenade actually suggests that maybe they are indeed. And oh, Fallen gonna pick up the kill. Yep. That's very important information there. Now, five versus three, it's gonna get tricky. They need to land a clean headshot to open up this B push with. They're down to 30 seconds, and then pre picking up the kill on FNX, but still hiding in the corner by the barrels. It's gonna be first. He's been spotted out. Glaive, is he gonna take a look there? He's actually just looking the other way. He's worried about Taco who's going to be on the left-hand side. Dupree goes down, Fur will fall next, and now it's a 2 on 3 15 seconds left. Fallen is everywhere on this map. That smoke from Taco is incredible. It just completely halted Astralis in their tracks. He gets it down from short, it blocks off the main entrance. Astralis have zero utility left, no Molotovs, no smokes of their own. No, they have to hope for a headshot, but they can't see anything. And then Fallen, I mean, Fallen gets three kills that round. That's a huge impact on him. That's done so well. I really, I, I really wish I could find out if Fur spotted Device as he made the jump, because he was jumping behind the truck early in the round, before they even did the boost. Right, he, right, was, right. he was jumping behind that truck. If he spotted Device like that, that's just a massive amount of information based off of a sort of relatively simple play. Because Device did have some really um, interesting timing to make it all the way up to long there. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Muscle memory kicking in just a little bit too quick. Kirby on short, though, looking to see if he can't find a way into the B site. And right now, I mean, SK Gaming are fully aware that this is going to be an eco round from Astralis. And so they aren't going overly aggressive. I like that. They do show themselves a little bit of a presence in mid, a little bit of presence elsewhere, but they don't want to put themselves at risk of getting overrun and giving a rifle to Astralis to work with in this round. So instead, they hold far back around angles, fall in with the long line here into mid, and well, that was a little bit touchy there. Device might have been able to get a shot, but FNX up close with the M4 will find it. Yeah. Again, they need more kills here on the Danish side. Pick up one or two per round, maybe get a bomb plant every once in a while. So far, they've had no bomb plants, so... They're out uh, 3,200, even just based on the on the lack of all parts. It's going to be Kiebu getting return kill there on FNX. Fur pushing up aggressively into the pistols. That could be a bit of a risk. Confused as to why they don't swap between Dupree and Sip here, because actually Dupree has body armor. So close to fall and hitting the shot. He already hit one, though. I think he got the wall bang on Dupree. Because Dupree was at full HP. I think he just dropped down to 67 there. 
And that's a steep angle to try and shoot someone at. Capri going to be charging here with the Deagle. Looking for the kill here. It's a two on three. And given the fact that there's only 15 seconds left, they kind of need to commit to this A bomb site. And there's almost no chance they could do it. Even with the stolen rifles here. 10 seconds left. And already SK are on site and ready for it. Sip goes for the spray and almost connects. Nearly takes down Cold Sierra. That would have been a great second kill or third kill. This is brutal though. For um, SK, I mean, right now for Astralis. Right now, I mean, right now for Astralis, the, the real issue here is that SK, it's just three, four, five. I mean, they're surviving these rounds with so many players alive. The economy, I mean, this is this is going according to plan. This is so perfect for SK right now. They've got yeah. the five round lead. They won the pistol. Now they've got an excellent economy to fall back on as well in case things get dicey. They survive with a round with one player. They can still go for a full buy across the board. Astralis really right now are just going to have to try and push that boulder uphill. It's not going to be easy because SK have everything going their way. I will say this, uh, so far for Astralis, they look really composed. Like there's not much in them that suggests that they're panicking at all. So just continue to do what you're doing. I mean, the, the, one of the big differences here is that every round it's SK picking up the first shot of the round. You know, you just need one round where it's one of the Astralis members to open up. You're in a 4v5 and then go with the plan from there on out. I mean, that's... I wouldn't be panicking yet if I was Astralis. I'd just say, all right, well, you know, keep keep to the plan, and uh, hopefully people won't lose focus, which has been a problem in the past for this team. So there's a reason to bring it up as well. A very aggressive setup once again for SK, with um, not just uh, Cold Zero all the way up there, but also a boost here, you see, coming out for FNX and Fur. Four people in mid right now for SK. Two people in mid, but then two in connector like this. They're just waiting to spring the trap on Astralis and Glaive right now. He dares not go through that smoke. When it does clear, though, there will be an opportunity for him. But and then it gets re-smoked by FNX. Cold can just sit here forever. Ooh, there's even a bit of a gap. Glaive obviously will have heard that fall back. And the question, the problem is he doesn't know if that's a fake. It could be that there's someone waiting on the other side for him still. But they are all going to be falling back into the A bomb site. That leaves Taco alone. They put so much uh, responsibility on this one very young player down at that B-bomb site. Um, looks like no execute's gonna happen yet. In fact, they're bringing the bomb back with 45 seconds left. This is, this is potentially scary. This is fascinating, but Fallen is still alive. This is his favorite spot as well. Somewhat at risk here. We'll see if he can actually survive this. They're gonna turn away from the flash and he needed to hit that shot. Fallen perfectly capable of going for the point blank no scope, but this time he misses and Fur gonna get caught in the side by Glaive. Here we go, Astralis. One mistake, and yeah, you hear Zonic shouting in the background there. They know it's a perfect round coming in here for Astralis. I might have thrown it. There we go. I cursed him. I'm sorry, Kirby. It was a near perfect round for Astralis. You did do that, but I think they'll take it anyway. Glaive with a triple kill, in fact. And Taco is gonna be going down as a shot through the wall by device. Astralis will pick up their first round there, looking very good. And I mean, there is a good bank being built by SK, but um, that one round is going to dig really deep into it. Cold Zero is out of money, FNX out of money after the buy, Fallen out of money as well. So just really only Fur and Taco to have anything worth talking about in the bank here. That's very important. And that's how it can change in just one round, you know. Yeah, this, look at the buy that they have for it. They have everything they need here, though. And so I'm curious to see if Astralis can, can continue to dig deep because that was a very intricate round from them. A little bit of a mid-presence to begin with with Glaive, showing themselves over a B, getting B control, but then wrapping back over to, I mean, like multiple layers in that round. So Astralis, are they going to have that, can be able to continue with that level of complexity? Well, they are trying for the boost here, but actually if you look at the other side, Taco was ready for it. He was spotting for it. And that thing, you see him turning around a little bit paranoid. It doesn't mean someone's not out to get him. And look at the aggressive push all the way on the other side. It's fallen pushed up with Fur. Great refract coming in for Device. That's hugely important. What is Fur doing out there? If Fallen gets that kill, Fur needs to fall back immediately, not hang around and get greedy and look for more. That's a bit of a mistake. Five to one now. SK Gaming in the lead, but Device, thanks to that shot, brings it back here for Astralis. They've got control of Sewers as well. And Device already starting to look to see if he can't rotate over there to support his mates when they go onto that site. Cold and Taco, look at how passive they are holding on that site. They're so far back. They do not want to get picked now, SK. They're just waiting for Astralis to show their hand. 
And SK do have a history of being able to retake this bomb site. So, I mean, the danger of being this far back is they can get smoked off, right? If any kind of exude comes in from Astralis, they can get smoked out. But they're so good at retaking it, I'm not even worried for them. We'll see if Astralis can hold on. I'm sure they're going to get the bomb down, but can they hold on to it afterwards? That's the big question. Fallen is really far away of the map right now. Needs to get into Connector and help out his teammates. 25 seconds left, and it will be a bomb plant. Another smoke goes up here. They don't have any more left on Astralis, though. So now it's going to come down to the shots, and Fallen is on an epic flank all the way into T-spawn with the AWP. If he gets picked, then the round is probably over. But if he comes in at the right time, then that could be it. And Dupree's in a great position. Exactly. He can look into the main monster. Into, exactly. He can hold off monster from this angle. Taco hits the headshot on device somehow. That's monster open. Dupree forced to rotate up short to try and constrict the defense. Canopy from the sewers is going to pick up one as well. But then Zipnix with the double spray. Just like that. It looked like they had a chance. And now Fallen has to back off and save. Very, very well done there. Coming out of Astralis. That was uh, that was quite a powerful uh, position that the pre was holding, in fact. I mean, he's only got two kills so far, but that worked out very well. When he's sitting at this angle, what you're talking about, he can obviously see Fallen coming through here, but that one flashbang that he pops in over the wall, that sets up for Sipnik's double kill. It's so confusing. Actually, exactly at that time, SK have like two or three members who are right here when that flash goes in. That's some really good basic teamwork. Really well done. And Astralis is going to pick up a second round for themselves. And look at the force up from SK. That's aggressive. They are going for it. They do not want to let Astralis be the ones to get in the steam game momentum now. And Astralis only survived that round with two players alive as well. So SK are definitely thinking that Astralis can't have that big of a bank to work with just yet. There's still a chance to come back very quickly here in this half. Five to two, SK in the lead. And you have two UMPs picked up here for SK, but look at how aggressive Kirby is on short. He's going to turn away, but he's got his teammate there to watch his back. Still, Taco manages to trade one for one. Yeah, he gets that first kill of the pre, and then actually through the wall, he's going to end up getting taken down. That's a real shame. Taco, he was almost out of the line of fire then. Looked like he just had the perfect angle, but got the killed anyway. Now, Device has been making sure that no one is flanking over at the other side. So now he's going to reconnect with the rest of the team. I mean, they made it work at B once. Who's to say they can't do it again? Why not? Rinse and repeat. They still have a decent nade count. Two flashes, two smokes, and a Molotov. Glaive will be able to use that to clear out Toxic if he wants to get up there close. Because he's still got source control, but Astralis are content to sit and wait right now. 50 seconds left on this clock, and the smoke just now cleared on short. And now the push begins. Zipnix taking point. He's got the vice behind him with the AWP, but there's the incendiary going into Toxic. Burr getting caught out of the open somewhat, but then nobody's there to push him on short. This could set up the crossfire between him and Cold, and Cold will be able to trade. He only has the Famas, and he's going to be going down. That's just not a very good weapon to deal with that many AKs on the other side. FNX and Fallen, if they can steal this in a 2v3, that will probably break a lot of Astralis, but Device hitting the shots here as well so far. It's going wonderfully for the T side, and Fallen again. I'm sure he wanted to try and clutch it, but it's just not possible. He's going to get taken out by Kiebu. That will finish it. They don't have any money on the SK side. They've just lost three rounds in a row, and they're going to have to eco now. This is a this is a really big turnaround. This is where I'd like to see SK take a timeout, actually. Because we've already seen one timeout from Astralis used, and that's when things started to really shape up for them going into that sixth round. Now... It's, it's pretty much where I would want to see either, not, maybe not this round because it's an eco round coming in for SK Gaming, but the next one. Just slow it down, and if anybody's picked up on anything, that's the time to say it, right? Just have a little bit of a timeout, a little bit of a breather here before you allow Astralis to really run away with this, because this is still early days. Three rounds on the board for Astralis. Well, look at the classic setup. We've been praising uh, SK as one of the teams that love doing this, and look at it. They've got Fallen with the flashbang. they got everybody out here, well, nearly everybody, by... Um by the restrooms, and we'll see, as soon as someone from Astralis show themselves, if they get deep and up in, into that trap, then that flashbang will come out and things will get really bad. Kirby was ready for it though. And I'm curious to see if he's gonna get caught, because he was looking right into the wall, expecting perhaps for their flash to come through, I don't know, but he was staring into a wall for a solid like 10, 15 seconds there. And he's still gonna get caught by it. Oh, Kirby, that's so frustrating. Bit of a refrag from Glaive, but they need more. They need to really slow this down now, Astralis. Otherwise, they're gonna end up losing this round. It's such a simple trick. Good spray coming in for Dupree, but he does almost go down. And now, ready and waiting, Glaive, long range spray here, gonna take the fight. He almost takes out Cold Sierra. Can he get that final kill in? Has to reload it. He's gonna go down. Oh no! Cold Sierra stealing it. Oh, one health as well with the Deagle. That's gonna really sting. Now, Dupree and Sipnix, they have to save this. And I mean, maybe mostly Sipnix, given the health situation. Yeah, Dupree, he got dinked earlier. And Cold spots it out, so now they know that they've got Bomb here. 
SK rather. They know that Astralis have picked up the bomb. It's still three players alive for SK Gaming. 30 seconds left, and they're really just trying to figure out, and it's a bit of a gamble. It looks like they've rotated down to the B side, expecting Astralis to hoof it over there to back up Dupree. But instead, they're going to walk right up onto the A site here. Astralis is the perfect call. And Taco, he's, yep, he hears the steps in mid, and there's the rotation. Fallen and Taco now have to try and get back up onto the A side as quickly as possible. Maybe Taco can make it there in time to get a shot in. There's a good Molotov there to buy them time for the actual plant called Cirrus also behind them now. So they've got to be really careful trying to make it up. Two seconds, they can't get the round. It doesn't matter anymore. Sip is going to get two big kills in, but what a huge win for SK. Such a simple trick. All they needed. I mean, we, we say it a lot, the one flashbang, and it sets up for a double kill in the beginning, and that's all she wrote. <sighs> Let's see here. I oh, mean, Glaive right. has woken up a bit. Yeah, oh, people nice. excited about the tag. Some good solidarity being shown by uh, by the SK team. He's just I like throwing too. my brain for a loop because he's then got a nip mouse pad signed by Astralis. <laughs> Talking about SK, I'm like, rat, my brain, rat. But this is a really weird situation right now. All right, it's, a, it's an all-out rush from B, for, for towards B site from Astralis. Really, they're actually just trying to go crashing into SK. Enough of the subtlety, just get in their face, try and take the fight, and Taco, he's still gonna get a kill! Sip picks up the return frag. He's gonna take out Taco as well as Glaive, but um, not sure it really matters anymore. It's a one on three here. A huge change of pace coming out of Astralis, but the, the fact is, that whole push was handicapped severely in the beginning by the first the first man in turned around yeah that's the ultimate no-no when you try and go for a for a b rush like that no one can do that it doesn't really matter how flashed you get if you try and turn around into your teammates you are you're almost making sure that that will not work this is a difficult situation nice shot there from Zeknix. i mean definitely a player that you want to have in a clutch situation if you are astralis the second kill comes through and he takes down cold 1v1 versus fallen now and is there any way for Fallen to know that Zipnix has still got this much HP? 30 HP left, and Fallen still with the AWP. Gonna go for the peak, gets pre-fired, and Zipnix is so on point right now, he just dropped him down to 47. This is unreal, he's already got the triple, he's gonna spray through the smoke, he almost catches Fallen. We're down to 30 seconds. This should never even be this close. Already SK should have won this round, but somehow Sipnix is staying alive. It's getting really drawn out. That smoke is gonna fade in just a couple of seconds as well, and Fallen will have very little cover on the other side. Sip walking out just out of the range behind the box, and he's looking for it. He's inspecting it. He gets the spray through, almost takes out Fallen. He's low, and there it is. Sipnix gonna clutch it, steals it away. A sure win for SK, but it bounces back. Unbelievable round from Sip. This has got to be a turning point. How unbelievable is it that he can actually clutch at 1v3? It's like the return of the old god tier zip when he was about to get kicked from the team. Then they had they sat him down. They're like, right, okay, this might happen. And zip all of a sudden just came alive. And it was situations like this that he just seemed to excel in. On overpass as well. 1v2, 1v3, all of a sudden Zip was winning all the clutches for Astralis. We just got a glimmer of that here. Unbelievable. Wow. That's, that's just got to take the wind a little bit out of the sails for SK at least because they just got gifted the round <laughs> with the flash and the pistols and now they're in an awkward position. Again, they force up with pistols and armor here, but I don't even know. You know, you have that, 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 that beautiful ship, lots of sails, right? And then uh, Zipnix basically doused the sails and they and lift it off the fire. There is no sails left. And <laughs> that's it. He's gone. The ship uh, it's not quite sinking yet, but he's got to be close at this point. 6-4, if you give it, if you, at least if you use the, the other, the other match that they were playing SK on this map as a baseline for how that Seaside was, things are not necessarily looking that great for them right now. Three on three, nice shot for Cold Zero, he can't get the second line up. He's so lethal with that pistol though. Cold Zero is just the Terminator. And there's a nice shot from FNX, actually. That was beautiful. Now, 48 seconds left. Plenty of time here for Astralis, but they've lost a lot of players, and Dupree is going to go ahead and hunt down first. So that opens it up here for FNX, who's recovered the AK. Device planting safe, to be expected. Now it's a question of whether FNX can find somebody stepping out into the open, trying to bait some kind of response here. FNX reaction. He's just looking for some shots through, and he's going to walk right into Dupree. Very good team play there between Dupree and Device in the end. Device low on HP. All he wanted to do was sit behind the boxes and allow Dupree to be that first point of contact. There was no way for FNX to get to Device unless Device peeked out. So some good self-control there from Device not giving FNX a way to get in there. 
I am always and continuously mystified by the fact that nobody wants to try and shoot through those plant, bomb plant boxes because you can, especially where they connect yeah, in, the right middle, in the middle. There, there's a gap. You can even shoot under them to some extent. Like there, there are just there are options. There are things that can be done with those boxes that nobody ever really wants to. SK, that that wasn't a half buy in that last round. They really did invest into everything, and it just didn't work out. Fallen with the scout this time around, but they're being they're being pushed to the limit here. SK, I'm. I'm a little bit worried for them right now. They're getting crushed underfoot is what's happening here. This is, the, Astralis will tie this up now, barring, well, I can't say that with any certitude considering they lost <laughs> two rounds ago to a hard eco from SK, but I mean, they, they should lock it out here, bring it up to 6-6, six, six, and then the pressure really is on for SK. They, SK had such a so strong start where I'm sure in their minds they're thinking, oh yeah, we can get this 10-5, you know, 11-4, really rock this first half. But now they're just hoping for an average half. They're just hoping that they can, you know, keep going from here. Good shot on Colin. Cold there with the Deagle. Gonna take one second chance for a double kill. He almost gets it. It's ridiculously close, but uh, not quite gonna happen. And a double spray here from both KBU and Dupree will take down FNX. So pretty much a settled round at this point. My big question now is because SK have tried the aggressive style over by playground a lot now and it it's been working to some extent but it, it also it must have become predictable now you know so I don't think they can just rinse and repeat that they can't just go back to continuously playing aggressively there one thing that we haven't seen them do that they did in the other game is they tried for the double push into the sewer right they had two people there that were sort of that would help hold connector with one or two human connector they'd actually almost have four people near connector at the beginning of the round. I'd like to see them try that again, just because it's an interesting approach. It means even if someone, I mean, it's very unlikely that someone will ever just rush five people into Monster Tunnel, right? Yeah. Normally someone will divert and go that way. So if you pick up that guy and then go back and defend B, it kind of works out. Yeah, it is one of the plays that you can make happen. I, it's, it's, I think it's more of a question of confidence here from SK Gaming. Are they going to have the confidence to go for the aggression? To be, to, because you have to be convinced at the same time. You go for the aggression, there's the desperation kind of push that can happen. But for SK Gaming to take the initiative, you have to have the confidence to know that you're going to hit the shots when the time comes. And right now they might be rattled. Big boom. Goes up with the bomb, and it's a tied situation now. Six to six. You know what we always say, whenever this team is down and out, SK, there's one person that really always brings them back and it's fallen. Where's the timeout? Well, there's, there's the potential for a timeout, but I, if you're talking about aggression and about confidence, this is when I would expect Fallen to step up in a round like this and just blast out a triple kill out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, that's, that has been his uncanny ability, but to count on that is crutch, you know? Like, you can't count on Fallen to be god tier and show up every time to save you. But what I'm more concerned about is, you know, Fallen happens to be the in-game leader as well. He has, well, like, Dead can't communicate with him, but where's the timeout to slow things down? I suppose it's just really rotating cold all over the map because this guy's getting kills left and right. So he's up on A one round, put him down on B the next and hope that he actually gets something done. And he does, wins the duel versus Dupree to start off. So SK Gaming now have that man advantage once again. And a bit confusing from Dupree's point of view because he was actually flashed when he kept running. He just kept running into that uh, angle and oh, what a great shot. Taco, he's been keeping an eye on that angle for a while and he's gonna get the follow up on Glaive. This is looking beautiful, that device to go down, so SK right back in it. Sipnik's now in a one on five here, and a very comfortable round, a confidence building round, you have to assume, for SK's point of view. Yeah, this is actually as good as it gets, <laughs> pretty much. Talk about bouncing back. It was confusing, because that flashbang was so good on Dupree, mm -hmm. but why did he, he had Kirby right behind him? Why didn't they just either fall back in the tunnel together, or at least not have to free run out in front of him, just you know, leave Kirby behind while he was flashed. That looked really weird. Miscommunication, perhaps. Dupree just deciding to stick to it, counting on Kirby to have his back, perhaps. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it, unfortunately. That's the beauty of CS at the same time. It's always open for interpretation because of that team element, because of that communication element. You never know, did the guy have all the information or what was the plan? Still. Fun times here because SK Gaming just rocked Astralis, and now we have to see if Astralis are going to have that strength of will to come back into this. Six to seven, Astralis still trailing on the T side of Overpass, and the bomb making its way very early on over here towards the B side, but that still doesn't mean anything. I mean, we've seen Astralis go for fake and counter fake many times. There's the flash, and Kirby just holding down Mouse One, and he gets the kill on Cold. 
that smoke actually didn't cancel the Molotov, so he took a lot of damage running through it. And if he hadn't got that kill, it would have been a horrible waste, but what a way to open, especially on Cold Zero. That's a huge kill to take out early on. You're going to give them a lot of confidence, and here's the problem for the Brazilian side. They don't have money to buy. If they lose this round, I mean, they're, they're just going to have to force, obviously, the 15th, but still, it will be a very uncomfortable way to end the half. He is fallen. Not going to get the shot, in fact. He did. Oh, Glaive is taking a little bit of damage. Fallen, trying to see if he can escape. They're hunting him down right now. Are they going to charge for the smoke as well to get him? They actually do. They're hot on his heels, leaving FNX behind here. Going to get the one headshot and tries for a bit more spray. Glaive almost down and out. Going to get the refrag, but Fallen there with the kill. And now coming in from Long, Device, he needed to get that kill. It's up to Siplix again to try and see if he'd clutch it. Molotov goes out, might be actually be able to take the kill. He forces out FNX, goes for the spray. Fallen in the corner, backup is not there yet. Taco very nearby and now sip he has the bomb he has 35 seconds is he gonna risk it he actually this is the identical situation to the one that happened when things got chaotic sk gaming seemed to thrive but then zipnix is always there as the anchor for astralis to try and lock it down unfortunately for him though fallen is waiting and he has no smoke he did have a smoke i was about to say he didn't have a flash but he has no way to cross onto the site just a little bit greedy there zip wow i mean yeah he, he obviously used the smoke for for the sniper's nest and then he just didn't have any more grenades to go down. He did have a smoke. Yeah, but he used it for the sniper's nest early on. Uh, when they got into the when when he goes in sewers, he threw it into the sniper nest to make sure that falling couldn't snipe him. Replay there at the end because I'm pretty I'm convinced he had a smoke at the end when he tried to cross and he was probably oh he threw maybe it? maybe he picked up a second one. I, I, that could have been that could have been well. He definitely true. threw one. But, but the first reason, one, yeah. I thought I saw a second one there. Regardless, it's just not this time, Zip. You get denied. I think a lot of that round hinges on whether or not Device can get the refrag when he comes in on long. Like, he needs to be there in time, on time, to, to get one kill in that bomb site. And he was just a little bit out of position. Now, for the final round instead, it's Astralis with four Tech Nines, one UMP, and uh, admittedly, quite a lot of grenades. For the 15th round and you only have Tech Nines, you have a lot of grenades, but do you have, I mean, the confidence, because you, this is the, the, the two times that Astralis have really gone hard, tried to go for a chaos round and really chase SK down, hasn't gone their way. I mean, yes, yeah, Zipnik saved you that 1v3, sure, but in the last round, it didn't work out. So Astralis trying to slow things down again, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, be, what was that? The shoulder peak headshot with the Tech 9 long range. I don't even know. That's so ridiculous. That's not supposed to work. Forget you ever saw that. If you're watching, don't try and play like that. Taco. Gonna go for a spray here in the tunnel. Actually, a bit of an overpeak. Now he's trapped in here. He needs back up badly. He turns around, but he's gonna be going down. Cold Sierra, 13 health, and he stands no chance. They're not gonna wait until his backup shows up. Now they're in the bomb site. They're gonna get the bomb down, and even worse, they have two Molotovs left still. Are they gonna try and boost their way up here? Actually, it looks like they're trying. Device failing to get up on that corner. Now finally gonna make the full jump up there. That took way too long and potentially could have been very bad for them. Fallen and Fur gonna go for the retake here. If they win this round, Astralis and it's looking likely that's going to be a huge first half for them already. Fur going to be pushing in, gets one, gets a double kill. Fur knocking it out. He's finally going to be going down, falling now with a one on two, and he can't make it. Kirby with a triple kill instead and an 8-7 finish. Barely in favor of SK here, but what an explosive first half. That's it's everything we could have hoped for, Anders. All right, hold on. Replay from the round before. And he, he did, did pick up one in transit. Yeah, he, that's Cold Zera who died there earlier in that round, remember? So that is a very interesting lapse. I mean, he's got 23 seconds as well. He could have he could have definitely done it. You're dead on. So, yeah, a little bit of a lapse that could have maybe swung things in the other direction. We are going to go to a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be the second half. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to go and download Team Stream, the free app from Bleacher Report, and follow the esports stream for all the latest e league and esports news. We are heading into the second half here between Astralis and SK, the first semi final of e league season two, and it's already been just completely explosive. It finishes 8-7. Is there anything more you want out of this game, Samler? What, what more could you wish for? I, I, we're, we're getting the clutches. We're getting the big plays. We're getting the down of the wire. I, uh, we're getting everything here, Anders. <laughs> I don't know what more you could ask for, actually, because everybody seems to be knife on kills. point right now. Okay, true. We haven't had a knife kill yet. No knife we, kills. We haven't had a, like a... Okay, never mind. But like, we haven't had a knife kill yet. No knife kills. I think we we're missing. We're short on some really big fallen moments. You know, like he's had some really good kills, right, and some good double kills in this in this game. But we need the we need the no scopes. We need the close AWP. You know, battle that we love seeing. You're right. He missed the no scope earlier. Right. You're right. Uncharacteristic. I'm Uncharacteristic just of him. He's usually that guy who just delivers. What I mean, what I'm so happy to see though is that Zipmix is once again back. That 1v3 clutch that turned it around for Look his team is unbelievable. Oh, what is this? 132. Dude, Zipmix is such a monster. That is actually horrific. And uh, he's playing against Cold Sierra there. As you can tell, um, if you look at his average on LAN, it's like, I don't know, it's like 104 or something like that, like 104 or something on average. It's, he has the most crazy ratings on LAN. And now he's a little bit uh, below that. You gotta wonder what that means. Um, I mean, just a slow start, or uh, was it the, was it was it a little travel, the adventure going to LA and back? I mean, we don't get the moving desk anymore, Anders. But if we get that shotgun transition, like just do it again, please, right now. If we get the shotgun transition, you know, more shotgun transitions the better. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you just want that every time, don't you? No, because that's what t that's what Cold Zero does to him. There you go. Oh, <laughs> yes. So I mean. That's what Cold Zera does, though. That's why Thor nicknamed him the Terminator. You know, he is relentless. Whether it's anti-eco spray downs, whether it's with the AWP, we saw with the Deagle in this half plenty of times where, I mean, he just dominated Glaive on long there in that hard eco. So, I mean, you can always count on Cold Zera to just consistently be there for his team round after round. It's nuts. This is what makes him the best player, or one of the very best players in the world. Speaking of Cold Zera and his team, we do have a little feature just showing the SK Gaming House, so let's check that out. What's up, guys? We're here at SK Gaming House. I'm going to show you how it looks like, so come on in. This is our boot camp area. Here is Ricardo, Fur, FNX plays right there. I'm in the middle, Cold Zero on my side, and Taco on the extreme left here. And there is a very cool picture. This is where we hold our trophies. In the middle, you have the first major one, the MLG Columbus. On the left, you have DCL Pro League. And right here, we have DreamHack Open Champions. That's pretty cool. We have some t-shirts from friends and other teams some special t-shirts they gave us. And right here we have the kitchen. It's a very big kitchen. Who does dishes? Everyone has to clean its own. But someone failed already, right? We can see here someone failed. Right here in the living room we have a TV, the coach, and also we can play some rec band sometimes. Taco likes to sing. Right here outside we have another pretty cool area. We have the pool. I don't like it to, to swim too much, but it's pretty beautiful as well. So right now I'm gonna show you Taco's room. Taco, excuse me, Taco. What are you doing? Okay, Taco's not here. Taco has a lot of puppies. I didn't know that. I think Taco is happy because he has our own room for himself. Here we have FNX room. Come on. Excuse me, FNX. He has a dog here. Pretty cool bed. All right, so let's go upstairs now. This is my room. I have a pretty nice bed here. There is a spoof, TV. A bathroom, here's the closet. I have all my clothes and save some stuff. This is a gift I received from Kyle Long. It's pretty cool. I have some good SK hats here. I like this style, I don't like the flat one. So as you can see, everyone has his own bathroom. This is like a miracle for us. Living here is awesome because we have this bigger house. When we finish practice, we can just go to our room, relax, watch our own things, some time until we have some privacy. I don't think Anyone will ever sit here, but we have this. This is our fair stays, this bed. This bathroom is interesting. This one is pretty cool because we have a fridge. Who has this on the bathroom? And now I think we need to move to the last one, which is Code Zero rooms. Code Zero has his own bed, he has his own table. He got his laptop here as well. Code Zero loves me. He has a Toyo with my name. I'm kidding. It's his girlfriend. It's Gabriella. <laughs> the dogs. So Baldur and Mafalda. They look cute, but just wait until they have something you have on their mouths. GG. 
Teu so baldo, what are you doing, teu so baldo? <laughs> teu so baldo! No, no. And as you can see, they love attention. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys had a good time seeing how it's like to be a pro gamer and be living here in SK Gaming House. Uh, but now it's time to go back to Prex. And it's time for you guys to go back to Atlanta. I hope you had a good time. See you guys later. Bye bye. All right, welcome. I love everything about that. This is uh, what Fallen is, Fallen is currently doing, like 11-8, um, so the kill death ratio. Not exactly sort of knocking it out of the park, but he's not really underperforming either. He's just sort of somewhere in the average of the team right here. A uh, bit of a rough situation. We are just fixing a PC problem. That's why we're just delaying a little bit. But you see him, I mean, he's had some impact rounds. This being maybe one of the biggest ones, that double kill in the pistol. Yeah, that, that pistol was so important for SK Gaming. But uh, Fallen... The thing is, it's not over yet because he saved it the other day when they played overpass. He saved it on T side in the one key round, pretty much the most important round of the map. It was Fallen to stand up. It was Fallen to get the job done for his team and bring him back from the brink. Yeah, and they, they've made some money. They've made just a little bit of money. So that maybe explains the house and a couple of other things too. Um, it looks nice. My favorite part about the video definitely are the, the dogs though. Well, you are a bit of a dog lover. I am, I am, I can't help it. We are headed back into the game now. We've sorted everything else. So thank you for your patience. We are now getting into the 16th round here. It is 7-8 as a scoreline, slightly favoring SK Gaming. And it looks like they might try for a bit of a restart again here. Maybe someone uh, forgot to uh, to buy the right things. Who knows? Regardless, um, who wins this pistol round? For, for once, it's not really a case. We've had a lot of this uh, in the quarterfinals. But for once, it's not a case where whoever wins it probably wins the map. Like, even if you if you, if you are Charlotte and lose this pistol, you can come back. And if you're SK and lose it, you can come back and win. So this will just, it will obviously give you a boost, but it won't probably decide uh, the ultimate outcome of this game. And that's, that's fun. No, I expect 30 rounds out of this, to be frank with you, Anders. If one team just starts dominating outright, I mean, I don't know. It's tough to say, though, because now we really have a little bit of a mystery on our hands. When we saw SK Gaming play this map earlier this week, obviously, T side was like non-existent for them. It was only due to just a heroic effort on the CT side that they were able to actually win. But T side was just so tough. It was Fallen coming through. It was a crazy like zip next level clutch round that made the difference. You, those sorts of rounds you can't count on happening every time. And so it being 8-7, it feels like it's a bit too close for comfort for SK. I am actually a little worried for them. I am too, but at the same time, notoriously, this is a team that learns so incredibly fast from their own mistakes. So for sure, they will have gone back already and looked at what didn't work on that T sign, tried to fix a couple of things. So I don't know. That's one of the things that actually I, I think is one of the biggest strengths that they have is that they're so quick to adjust and they always have been. It looks like a fairly quick retreat coming out of Astralis here. They're going to fall back from the early position that they had. And now they're pretty much out of utility. They have no kits. They're all armored up. So if the bomb goes down, that's very bad news for the Danes. They're looking for headshots, and Device is going to get a chance here in a minute in an off angle, but not so much. FNX again. So on point with the pistols right now. Excellent headshot there on Device to drop him, give his team the man advantage. They still have all of their utility as well. SK Gaming have now got everything going their way here in this pistol round. Minute five left on the clock, ample time to clear out all the angles. And now with all the grenades, the utility, they get to do what they want on this map. Life got pretty difficult for Astralis. They're going to have advanced warning, though, for this B push because of this jump the Sip is making. Unless he gets taken out, of course, in which case it's just all bad. Trying for the wall bang, not quite hitting it. Now they're in so much trouble here. Dupree and Sip alone. And I mean, the problem is these clocks are going to close the distance so fast once they get into the site here. Dupree trying for the shot. He's going to pick up one. Hasn't read it yet. Six bullets, five bullets. He can't land the headshot. Sip is there to help him. Here, oh my god, oh my god. Dupree gets the kill regardless and he takes down Cold Sierra. Now it's fallen left and he's going to drop. What a godlike teammate Sipnix is. That could not have been better timed. And Dupree obviously with a triple headshot, but that. He's just unbelievable. Give him a hug, Dupree. Give him a hug. There we go. It was a little, okay. It was a high five. It was, it was cool, but I think Zip deserves a hug at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is I mean, life saving. Look at this. It's the timing. It's actually Zip next to get that kill. Wall bang through as well. That is so sickening because if he doesn't get that, Dupree's never going to be able to reload that pistol. He goes down. Then Zip is alone on the bomb side against still two players coming in from SK. What an important save. It will be a bit of a timeout call from Astralis. They say it's a tactical one, but I'm not sure. Are they just gloating here? Are they just saying... Are they letting SK just fully absorb the fact that they just got wrecked by two players? I mean, 
we've always said this as a joke that someone should do that once where they were up like if they're up like 15 to 3 they should just do a timeout anyway just yeah. to be like yeah well, you know <laughs> you're really losing badly just take a moment to think about that but um <laughs> you had it you had it but then you lost it I feel like because we have, you can take so many timeouts now, and they haven't used too many of them. Maybe it's more a case of them say like something minor being you know wrong. Someone just needing to like you know change his position or change his chair or something, and then that's it. We're back in the game here. Well, this is the Astralis have now used two timeouts, so they have two more, two 30-second timeouts left at their disposal here. The nade goes sailing past FNX, doesn't damage to nobody because he was alone. But look at how quickly Taco's up here on short. He had the chance. He could have caught Zipnix completely off guard there. Zipnix didn't even have his gun out. He was running onto the site. Yeah, that would have been very scary. Uh, SK expecting for the rest of the team. They got Taco as sort of the loose cannon running around all over the place. But the rest of the team are hoping that all this movement down here will force someone on the other side of the map to come and peek. You know, if someone is at restrooms and they're getting information from their teammates in B, that there's a lot of movement outside B, maybe they'd go and look. That's I think that's sort of the point of Taco being that proactive and then the, everyone else waiting. But they didn't find anybody. Astralis are being very defensive. Astralis are being very proactive with their rotations as well. For a second there, with all that noise that Taco was making and the spot, Device rotated down, so they had four players on the B site. Device was staying in Sniper, though, so I mean, he quickly gets back up to A, but for a second there, Astralis were ready and waiting. If SK wanted to press the matter, they were about to get a face full of lead. Here's a problem, actually, Astralis uh, maybe haven't considered. SK have two smokes and two Molotovs. Astralis have nothing left, so it's going to be hard for Astralis to stop the bomb from going down in this round, and once it's down, they don't have that much to retake with either. It's important that Dupree gets that opening kill because now the push is going to happen towards the A bomb site, and there's only one person here. Device, he can't stop this bomb fire. Now he just has to stay alive and wait for the actual retake to happen. 20 seconds left. The bomb is making its way up. Taco going to be in charge of putting it down. Fur will be dropped, so it's looking good for Astralis still. And Dupree with an important kill there. Taco can't get anything out of it. Nice shot from FNX and trying for the follow up. He's not going to get it. That round could have been much, much worse for Astralis. That was uh, scary, but I do have to admire just how well Device played that as well. I mean, look at that at the end. He's actually He actually caused Taco to hesitate with the plant because he was shooting so much into the side of Optimus there and into the side of the truck that uh, Taco came off the bomb plant, bought even more time for Astralis to work with the rotation to get up onto the A site. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, that, that definitely wasn't bad at all. Now, I do think it's um, still a pretty good round for SK. They sure. got the kill, they got the bomb plant, and uh, they did invest a lot into it, but it won't really hurt them in the upcoming round that much. So uh, I think that's still reasonable. In fact, they're just going to buy more deagles here. Yeah, that's where I wonder, is this reasonable or not? Actually, how much money does Fallen have right now? I, yeah, I guess he's just accepting that he's not going to get the AWP unless there's some magical round here. Or he manages to pick up, like, all the kills into a 1v1. I don't know. Taco, again, with the aggression. They're just not expecting it. Zipnix gets blindsided. That's just a little bit sloppy, in fact. No chance to do anything. Caught with a grenade in hand. Taco gonna get close enough here. Try and see if he can steal the gun. Got uh, got the smoke out of it maybe, but um, still not the best start here in this round for Astralis. And you, I mean, if you win a round like right now, like this, if you're SK, you did it on the first half one time. If you do it again here in the second half, there's a limit to how many rounds like that Astralis can lose before they really jeopardize the game. Go back down to Glaive's perspective, please, and let's see what uh, if, where that where that rifle went. Like, can you come off third person on him and see where the rifle went? Because is, is Zipnik's rifle still around? Maybe they blew it back with a grenade. I didn't actually pay attention to that, but you, that that's that's something that people do sometimes. You throw a grenade in front of the rifle and it'll it'll blow all the way back in the bomb. So no, it's there, right there. It's right under him. So Taco, yeah, that was a close call. Okay. Now they're moving up to the bomb site, and this time both KRB and Device are actually on the site itself. So this is a mean crossfire that KRB and Device have set up. We'll see if it's going to work out for SK. They got smoke in there. KRB trying a little bit. Device is down and out of the round. KRB has to go big right now. And he's already very low on health. This is looking like a brilliant round coming out of SK. They're going to get the kill on KRB as well. And Glaive and Dupree left two versus five. SK, how do they do it? Just pulling out of the hat here. The bomb down, and they're trying for the retake anyway, but... I don't even see how that's going to be possible any longer. Glaive, a little bit of damage in there, goes for a second kill, tries to spray it down. He does get the double, but he can't get the third one in. Dupree gets, but he goes for the trail. He hits the headshot, and somehow he gets the triple and wins the round regardless. <laughs> Riddle me this, Semla. How did they win that round? No, I get it. Astralis, they like to um, make life as difficult as possible for themselves. 
that this, you know, if there's an easy way, Astralis will definitely just do a 180 and go the hard way as quickly as possible. Um, we, I don't we, understand. <laughs> we still have to obviously remember that that is a brilliant round from, from SK because they still managed to take away four rifles and get a bomb plant. They set themselves up so nicely now. If they win this round, then Astralis are broke. They can't really rebuy. And then I don't know what will happen. This is this is a very tight game right now. Yeah, this is exactly. Just because of that one round, it got so much more difficult. Shot there, attempt from Device. Has to be careful. He's just going for a straight line, and he's not going to be too slow, exactly. Not managing to get back into restrooms, not making it back around the corner. Now this connector is big here for SK Gaming. And a uh, bit surprised. What is going on? Taco burns Zipnix alive? Yeah, down at the Elpen. Like, actually all the way back at the Elpen there. Kirby with a good spray down and a team kill. What is this game now? He's going to get the kill as well. That's a triple. And if you count the team kill, oh my god. Nothing can be predicted any longer. Taco going to be walking out. He doesn't spot the angle. He doesn't see the player down there. Finally spots out Kirby, who doesn't see him apparently. And now it's a one on two. I am losing my mind. I am, yeah, I am as well. This is actually getting just a little bit unreal here. Is it both players, I mean, both teams trying to go for the jugular, basically, really just trying to go for the over-aggression that's costing them? Because SK Gaming, they, I mean, look at, there's still 50 seconds left on in the round, and they decide to flash their way through smoke. It's these sorts of decisions where it's just like, okay, you're going for the confidence play, you're trying to shatter their spirit, trying to shatter their confidence, but in the end, you're turning it into a 1v2 where Taco's got half HP, a flash in AWP. I just have no idea. They were in a 5-on-3, and now they're practically losing it. I don't know how Sipnix died. I don't know why Kirby wasn't flashing behind Device so he didn't get shot in the back. There are just more, way, way more questions than there are answers right now in this game, and it's going to be Glaive to pick up that kill on Taco. <laughs> Astralis should not have won the last two rounds. This should have been a 10-8 to eight lead for SK at this point in time. Yeah. And instead it's about to be, it's about to be different. I just I can't. It's a can't shattering. Even. This is shattering for SK. And uh, yeah, it looks like he was just barely got caught in the Molotov, couldn't get out of it. Nicely done there by Taco. But then this, minute 28 left. And so FNX, was he spraying through? He, he was the one who got the kill on Fallen. I'm just <laughs> shocked, shell shocked. Yeah, no, I am as well. I mean, I mean, hero play, hero play from Kirby to stay alive and get the job done there, but unbelievable. And this is just so close. 11 to 8. SK Gaming still with the money for the rifles, and now, well, that's enough uh, Enough with the slow play here. In fact, we did it at a minute 28 last time. We're going to go earlier this time around. As soon as that incendiary clears, they're just going to go charging into the site, or they're going to extinguish it and just go running in anyways. Debris, you got a chance! Wow, so many grenades onto his position. He never had any chance to do anything there. Glaive trying the best that he can, and he's got backup coming in as well. It's a really fast rotation coming out of Astralis here. Sip gonna pick up the one kill. A little bit more spray coming through. Cold Sierra is low on health. He's still getting a kill, and oh, very double spray down from Glaive. Somehow Cold and FNX bunch up inside the smoke, and there's no bomb plant yet. Where is it happening? SK, they had sight control for all of us a couple of seconds, but I think that bomb dropped off onto the left, and they just couldn't pick it up again now. It's Fur alone against two. He's got no bomb plant. They got all the time in the world to do this. A bit of a jump. They know where he is. Gonna go for the fight. Sip alone without any help. Fur, can he hero this? He's already got the double. He's looking for the triple. If he can't get it, Device will take him down. So close for Fur to clutch it. A little bit of a grin from Device at the end. That's going to make it 12-8. And I'm watching the replay right now, wondering how that bomb is so far back. Cold Zera carrying the bomb. It's Glaive. You think that the bomb is about to get planted or has, should have been planted five seconds ago. Somehow Glaive manages to stop it from getting onto the site. And there we go. SK calling for their first tactical timeout. And it's been a long time since we've seen them go for one, actually. It didn't happen at all in the first half, and so they finally decide we need 30 seconds to actually start discussing what's going on here. These rounds are a bit too close for our liking. We're getting advantages in the rounds, and then we're not able to capitalize. We're not able to close it out. And that is uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of SK. SK are known for their, well, ability to aim in all situations, but also their communication. They just seem to be like this boa constrictor that just constantly closes in on you. With you, Astralis should feel like they have no way out, and yet each time Astralis are escaping. It's very interesting because with the kill that they got on Dupree, normally when you get that frag at the barrels, it means the last person on B bomb site is usually either way behind where you make the jump where Sipnix is now, 
or or just on the bomb side itself. But this time they actually had two people in L band, Astralis did, and they had two people coming in from the other side. So they were almost all at the bomb side by the time Dupree went down. Now they're gonna try and make their way for the smoke and Dupree's just not interested in whatever it is they were selling there. Just instantly taking out one, Siplix with the other one, and that pretty much closes it out. Nice headshot as well. This is looking fantastic for Astralis. Yeah, solid. Not going to be perfect. Again, FNX hitting pistol shots, but that's the difficult sort of scenario here. Is he's getting these pistol shots, but it really isn't leading to round wins. He is going to make it just a little bit more expensive here for Astralis. Two kills in what was not a hard eco, but a half buy from SK. So SK, I mean, they get the two kills out of it, but still, it is a 13-8 situation here, and SK have to spend all of their money in this round. What is this? All right. Cats from the studio. That is, those are some excellent, uh, excellent socks there from our wonderful, one of our wonderful observers, um, Sapphire Heather, who's been working in this industry uh, for a very long time and is also married to Volcano, who made um, cash and, and helped out with other things too. So, legendary uh, person himself. I love Sal. CS and their blood and their DNA, basically. Yeah, 1.6 player as well. Um, more people should know uh, who Volcano is, let's put it like that. He is, uh, oh, what a boost coming up there. Oh, if that had worked, that would have been brilliant. That's such a shame for Cold. That's so frustrating for him that he actually spots someone and then he's not able to get the shot. But still, that's going to put Astralis just a little bit uh, on edge out here in mid. The Vice decides to back off at the AWP and hold a bit more of a passive angle. That one incendiary, that one Molotov, it's becoming so popular to just throw it out. It actually doesn't go quite deep enough. So that's a bit of a shame because it's to stop that position right there to keep the vice from holding that angle that you're throwing that Molotov out there. Look at where Sip and Dupree are holding. This is actually the setup that SK themselves ran uh, not that long ago on this map. They, nobody's holding on B. Instead, it's a double setup in sewer, and then everybody else is at the A bomb site. It, I can definitely see how this can work, but I, but it's also possible to imagine how it could backfire really badly. Well. We did see signs of weakness from SK Gaming versus Dignitas where they started to run out of time in the rounds. And I'm seeing it again here, Anders. 30 seconds left in this round and SK are no closer to getting onto a bomb site. They really aren't going to have time. Two smokes, no flashes left, a single Molotov and an HE. That's the utility that SK Gaming have to work with. And again, it's going to come down to a shot here. And kirby has got the angle that drops the bomb. 15 seconds left and they still have to just hightail it up here. But the full-on rotation is coming through and Glaive has got the angle already. Oh, this is perfect, Glaive! He's gonna let him line up, that's it, they guarantee the win! Yeah, he even lets FNX go down the device instead. What great patience being shown here by the Danish captain. The time has run out, but it's gonna be Taco trying to see if he can stay alive after the cops run down. He will be able to. It's a good job on Taco there, but still, Glaive obviously with the patience. Wonderful play there from Glaive. Fully aware of just how much time was left in the round, how much pressure SK Gaming are under. Fallen doesn't check left, and it's perfect. At any point in time, he can pull the trigger and completely ruin SK. Instead, he just lets them hang, like he pays the rope out just a little bit more. Look at how mad this is. They are they're obviously winning now, Astralis. They're doing a very good job, 14 to eight, and Device is at nine kills. <sighs> Normally, this team does not work without Device stepping up big, but it's not needed right now. Apparently, everybody else is working as a team, as a unit. It's what Device said in that interview when we got into the game with Rachel. He said, I don't need to be that loose guy anymore. I, we're playing as a team, as a unit, and it's working out. Sip and Dupree are about to be put to the test again. Almost caught out was Sipnix and in the tunnel there. Dupree, he's only going to get the one kill. No, he's getting no, Sipnix with the kill. And they both go down. So now four versus three. Great flashbang to take out FNX. Wow, brave play there from Glaive. And it works out for him in the end. He even spots out Cold by Monster. A little bit of extra damage could go through. Device, the man in question, stepping up. He's got the angle on Fallen now. Pretty sure he spotted the gun barrel there as well. So he has something to go off of. He knows that Fallen is holding close. Trying to bait a reaction again, Device. Looking to see if he can't get that opening kill here for his team, and he's going to lose it. In fact, Fallen takes his head off, and now Glaive has got a bit of a tough situation. He's going to be able to just barely get a pixel on Fallen there, but he loses his teammate as well. A lot of trouble for Glaive, and almost no time either. He's going to go for the smoke defuse. Just pray, cross his fingers. <laughs> it's not going to work for long. Taco not allowing it this time. Great play for him. Great double kill. And that will be nine rounds for SK. They almost have... That's the first round they get in this half. Yep, they break the streak, finally. But again, incredible difficulties here to actually make it happen. And so now SK, they have a long way ahead of them here. One good thing, however, is because some of these rounds have been pretty close, Astralis never really established that bank. 
And so right there, SK, they finally went around. And it's a little bit of easy street. Not that many potholes in the road because Astralis pistols. But that does tell the story of the first half, doesn't it? You win seven rounds in a row of your Astralis, you would lose a single round and you're ecoing. That says something about how close it's been for SK. Definitely a testimony to the damage they've done already. Fur, not really uh, overextending. You see how safe he's playing that corner. He's not just going to charge in after Glaive, because there could be three more people around that corner. He's really intelligently playing that one angle. They're not going to throw anything to chance here. Yeah, Fur, they rely on him to be a bit of an artist alone, as well as Taco out front of Monster. Again, waiting to see if there's going to be any kind of push coming in from Astralis over on this side of the map. That's not the case. Wow. And instead, it's Fur picking up the second kill here. That's Kirby going down in connector. Fallen will spot the man pushed up. That's Device pushed it long. He jumped to look over the rock, actually, to get that information the first time around. I love those details. Dupree and Sip obviously just waiting for the Brazilian team to come find them. Ooh, buddy. The Zip next move, he doesn't even flinch. Cold Zera does it with left. Zipnik still refusing to peek. Oh, well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> it could have been. Timing is uh, everything, but not this time. 14 to 10 is the scoreline here. We're moving into the 25th round. And we'll see. The money for Astralis, it's actually not there. They, half by. Yeah, they could go for a half by. That'd be fine, but that's interesting. It gives SK just a bit of runway. Yeah, it does actually allow them to just pick up a little bit of mom momentum, but with how Astralis have gone so far, they should be able to trust in themselves, and they are going to go for P250 and Flash. I like it on Zipmix as well. But they aren't going for it in mid. It looks like it's going to be a setup over here towards B, perhaps to get control of Sewers, maybe to just hunt down Taco. You can count pretty reliably on Taco being out front of Monster. There it is. Okay, very aggressive setup. Fallen with a good refrag there, and Gleave is almost down as well. Gets taken out by FNX. That was actually coming in from Connector, yes. A little bit of a spray through, but... A good adjustment here for uh, SKR. I don't think they're going to give up this round, but it just is always scary when you lose someone that early on. Now, Infer has already cleared out the A site, so if they really want to be thorough about this SK gaming, they can take their time. They still have bomb control. FNX getting caught in connector might complicate matters, however, so he has to be careful. Yeah, he's going to back off. But the bomb can rotate all the way through mid, no problem at all, up to the A site. And so now it's just a matter of finding the kills. And Zipnix is hoping he's going to be able to actually pick up a gun to work with here, but not the case. There we go. Okay. So, now we get to focus on the next round here. That's, what, that's when it's really going to get fun because Astralis have the full bank now, everything they need, and they've gone for the tactical. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. You know, again, as a team, especially the core of this team, they have a history of losing their step just when they're there, you know, just when they're at the edge. This would be one of those situations. They've, they've got 14 rounds. 11 for SK Gaming, and, and it's, it must be obvious now to anyone watching that SK are also starting to regain the confidence. They're finding that momentum again. They're, they're looking much more um, yeah, in sync with themselves. So we'll see if they, can, if they can continue that right here. Because if they can, if they win this round, Astralis go back to ecoing for another round, and then suddenly it jumps from 11 to 13 rounds, and then you're within striking distance, then you can win the game. Then the pressure starts to mount if you're Astralis, that's for sure. And you're right, they have had difficulties in the past, but so far they really do have to just be able to sit down and trust themselves here. Because they've managed to get this far, and they only need the two rounds. If they break SK's, SK Gaming's back right here, they can get it done. And it's a necessity, I think, for Astralis, and they know it because there's Train coming up next, which is going to be SK's map, in which they're so good on that map as well. So Astralis, a little bit of added pressure, the fact that they really do need Overpass here to have a chance to make it to the Grand Finals. This is very true. That CT side for, for Train, no one's been able to beat it, it seems. Actually, Kierbu is pushing out. They have Device with the AWP here, so both players are going to have a hard time helping each other out. If they get caught alone, then not many refracts could really happen, and maybe as a result, Kierbu is going to be falling further back. The bomb still on Cold Zero is taking a bit of a dip in the fountain. Yeah, it's, it's a hot day out. Look at that. Not a cloud in the sky. Go ahead. Birds are trapped. <laughs> he had a cold cerveza with him? In the middle of the war zone, just always a okay. good time to relax. Fine, there are clouds. Wow, similar. You can't lie to the audience like that. Wrecked by my own observers. <laughs> Simplex and Dupree are on the B-bomb site, and the all of SK seem to be gravitating towards that side of the map. They have a little bit left. I mean, Simplex has got uh, an HE grenade for, for another second, maybe, and I'm just going to put that out. 
and a flashbang, but they don't have any Molotovs, no smokes or anything to buy time. And speaking of time, we're down to 30 seconds here, so SK have got to get a move on. Where is the backup going to come? Glaive is down there as well. They actually have a very strong setup. And now, Sip, can he spray into the tunnel? He's got a spot at one. That will distract from the debris, picks up the kill. They line up in sight. And Glaive, oh sorry, Device is going to be taken down. Cold Zero, that's a really big kill. They're low on health as well. It's a three on four. They just don't have anything left. Sip is going to be taken down, Fallen. And it's all on Fur and FNX here. They just are out of time and out of people. Dupree will get the last kill of the round. That's a massive round for Astralis. Man, they're too good. That B defense for the monster charge. SK have almost have had hardly any luck at all so far with that kind of execute onto the B side. It always seems like Zipnix and Dupree, well, are able to at least inflict some damage on them coming through. It's never just like a complete wipeout. This time around, it was perfect between Dupree and Zipnix. They executed that. I mean, it was just, you all saw it. It was a thing of beauty. We need to get into this round because this might actually be the round where Astralis take us to train with a map advantage, 15 to 11. Both teams pretty much full pot. And it's a matter of keeping your cool SK gaming at this point. Ooh, almost getting caught there, Kirby, on the side of the wall. But so our analysts were pointing out overpass and train, two of the best maps for SK. They might be about to lose one of them here. If they don't, then there is still overtime to take into consideration. And I mean, if you go, oh, what? <laughs> Device, what are you doing? Taking out Cold Sierra. It what must have been a pixel shot, in fact. One you can pretty much only make if you are pre-aiming that angle. Glaive is going to get flashed in. He does go down. So does Kebu Fur with a huge double pickup device with the refrag. And now we're ticking past the minute mark here. It's a three on three. And sort of a scattered defense coming out of Astralis here. They left Dupree alone at the B-bomb site. Yeah, they hadn't used that setup yet, Astralis. And, well, first time we see it, and it almost cost them the round. Losing two players like that, that's not good enough. And Taco! takes down Dupree on the B site. Now the B site is open. They have a way out, SK Gaming. 45 seconds, plenty of time here. The only thing that Taco's worried about is Zipnex, but he spots him in the distance. Still, to get that information, he takes a bullet to the face, and that actually causes his teammates to pause. Zipnex will, fi will find the kill on Taco, and we're into a two on two. Zipnex is essentially playing the game of his life right now. He's got 26 kills in 26 rounds, and now it's a two on two, and this one is gonna be for the map. Fallen and FNX, they're down to 20 seconds. Sip, Sip is holding on the bomb side right now. He can see them crossing over. The bomb is going to go in for the back line, though. So he's going to challenge Fallen first. He pre-fires it and almost takes him out. That's such a lot of damage. And now, can he push up? He can't deny the bomb, but he goes for the spray. Hits the headshot on FNX. And that's going to be a double kill. Now all on Fallen. 10 health in a one-on-two with the AWP walking in the back line. He needs to miss no shots here. Otherwise, he's not going to win it. Tries to creep in a little bit, and it's too much. Sip with the triple. Astral is going to take away the first map here. 16 11 with 28 kills on Sipnix. What a wonderful performance, and what a surprise to begin the semifinals with. Yeah, the big win, and a decisive one at that. Not enough. Not enough got out for SK Gaming in the first half on their CT side. It was cutting it too close with the 8-7 finish to the first half. And you get to see exactly what happens with Astralis. And no, he wasn't even pre-aiming it. He's just that quick, Anders. Device, he's just that good when he's on shape. It's un unbelievable. I mean, 16-11, though. That is a fantastic way to start things off here Before for Astralis. Australia. They've got the map advantage now. And we're going to take a short break before we get it. Hand it over to the analysts to see what they have to say.
think it's going to be a really hard match against SK. They are an amazing team. I think they're the best team in the world right now. It's uh, the opponent I, I don't want to play against, but if you look at the game we played against NIP, I don't think people should doubt us or we proved that we are, we are ready to, to do everything to win. I can for sure tell you that I think we are going to win, but I believe we are capable of doing it and I believe we will do it, I think. <laughs> Well, if it was a crazy game plan, so far it's working. Astralis take that first map. I mean, it got a little bit hairy towards the end, but I mean, they were in control for most of it. Uh, let's break it down, guys. And uh, there's one thing that's very much at the forefront of my thinking. We've already said about how Cold Zero went to get that award. We heard in the interview how he's only had four hours sleep. There he is at the bottom of the scoreboard for SK Gaming. Bad call. I gotta say it. Yeah, I know. I mean, absolutely. If, if you, I mean, if you're gonna make that trip across the country and back right before a semifinal matchup, you have to play better. And it's not just the number of kills. It's not that he's at the bottom. It's that I can't even recall a round he had any kind of massive impact in. So, uh, th I mean, this was. It started out looking okay for SK. This was the side we knew they were gonna be dominant. Fallen with his AWP on this map. Obviously, one of those players who just goes god mode in, this, in these situations. Um, had a good start, but once Astralis got control, they rattled off like four or five rounds very, very quickly. And at that point, you just kind of look at each. Other, remembering SK from yesterday struggling to get four rounds uh, on the T side of this map and you almost had to feel like you know that this is already almost over this is already a tall task for SK and then they're just gonna look at this and say how many mistakes did we make how many times did we just make one silly mistake that just gave up way too much ground that one verse three that a Zipnix one comes comes perfectly to mind and Duncan if Cold Zero was a bit lackluster What's up in a Zipnix? <laughs> yeah, Zipnix is going off on this one. Obviously, I mean, he, he, being very, very intelligently on this map. When they were over on the other side of the map, it was Kirby. Like you see, he was getting all the kills. Yeah, you actually saw the same story as yesterday. It's just the outcome at the end was different. They didn't have that huge play from Fallen that could win them the game. And you've seen, actually, SK do not look confident on their T-sides now. They're second-guessing themselves all the time. And Cold Zero, almost no impact for the last sort of, you know, five or six rounds here. The problem with that backstory of like, oh, and he had four hours sleep and he went and got the award, that's a great story to tell when you win the game anyway. It's like, what a legend, you know, you could go through anything. If you then blow the game like this and you don't have an impact and you're supposed to be the best player in the world, that's what people say. Now people are going to ask questions, where were you in that game? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially for, for someone who did, I mean, and rightly so, win the best player of the year award. I mean, that, that's an incredible achievement. But yeah, it certainly didn't look like it here. Yeah, I gotta say, I'd, I'd put him on lockdown. I'd have been like, "You're sending a representative, my friend." <laughs> you will be recording a video from the. But, but what do I know? What do I know? Anyway, uh, well, let... you recorded a film. Uh, you I, recorded a video. I did, but that's because I didn't want to fly over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, look, let's um, let, let's get into this. You picked out a round again, Moses. You've been in your tactical zone. Got in my Professor X chair. Yep. Yeah. What, what have you got for us? <laughs> a little bit too. <laughs> Unexpectedly edgy. Keep going, Moses. <laughs> what have you got for us then? Uh, <laughs> well, this was this was just a, a showing of good defense by SK Gaming. I mean, the, the real defense, the real part of this defense that's impactful is Taco. Look at his positioning, the fact that he's not peeking either side of the pillar whatsoever. This just sets up two crossfires because he's got Fur up here doing work. He's also got a teammate, Cold Zero, over towards Sandbag. So no matter which way that the, the, the terrorists attack, I mean, Taco just has to survive there and it sets up multiple crossfires. This one on three, it's the very same round. This is just too much aggression from, from the SK gaming side of things. I, I mean, it's just, why are, you, why are you peaking? You have a three on one. These are situations they normally don't lose nine times out of 10. Uh, and here they're just over peaking, gets the best of them. So, I mean, this is part of that. That maybe this is something that if, if Colts here, they have a little bit more talk, they have a little bit more discipline. Um, but they, I mean, those are just mistakes you can't make. From now on, we'll call it Cerebro. Okay? Cerebro? Cerebro. Uh, so You'll yeah, be saying, sorry, bro. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, so uh, I've got to say as well, I mean, you know, the, the, is this a case of Astralis kind of over-punching? Because, I mean, you're not going to get another map like that from Zipnix, I don't think, in, in, in a best of three series. Yeah, but right? I mean, I'd go the other Those way. That's a godlike. I, I'd say also, you're probably not going to have device players probably on that. That used to be one of his specialist maps in Astralis, you know. So the fact you can win that with him having a very quiet game, I think Astralis as a team are legit, you know. They just look like all the pieces are working at the moment. You can, you'd really struggle to find any aspect of that core that doesn't come in day in and day out. So the fact that they can get a win like this with Device on a fairly quiet game tells me they've got a lot more in the tank maybe than they showed here. I, I would say as in that sense though, the difference is usually a big Zipnix performance, you know, it contributes to the team. You're not gonna have monster numbers like, like that mm. on paper at least. 
Uh, yeah, and I also think he, looking looking into the next map, especially on terrain where SK is going to be more comfortable, you're not going to see him. You don't see him lose three on ones very frequently either. So I mean, I don't think we're going to see too much of that given up again. Good performance from Zipnix, and we've seen him have consistency at this level in the past, like like months months ago, like earlier in the year, maybe even at the end of last year. But um, yeah, this is just a team now where we're with KRB with Device. You can have multiple people step up in different situations. Well, of course, uh, train is round the corner, uh, so it's going to be very very interesting indeed. We're going to talk about that shortly, but we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, the desk will uh, set up the scene for the next map. We'll see you then. Target on my back, lone survivor last. They got me in the side. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, we have got train to come in this series now. Astralis versus SK Gaming. Here's the records. We're going to go into this bit first before we start chattering away because you can see Astralis, they're pretty good on it. And historically, in the Carrigan era, they were pretty good on it. But it's pretty good. And then there's SK Gaming. 25-2. and two. Absolutely insane record. Yeah, and at the moment, they're actually on a 17-game winning streak. Now, with that said, they almost lost to Astralis, and I, I would argue should have done uh, when they played them very recently uh, at uh, Oakland. So it was a 16-14 game, and Astralis were in the lead for a large part of it, and Glaive was, has been saying that he feels that there was enough there that he knows he can go the extra yard and, yeah. and, and actually end that streak. Well, I mean, the interesting thing about the way that game played out was Astralis got to like 13 rounds on the T side, actually, at real early in that second half. And it looked like, right, they've got enough time here to execute. But interestingly, the, the key to the strength of SK on this map is the CT side. And they really adapted to the sort of five-man rifle approach that they were taking. And Astralis at the time, that was a series device, actually, interestingly enough, was also having kind of a bad performance in. He decided not to go to the AWP, actually. He kind of just stayed with the rifle, tried to play a bit too safe. And in the end, I think they look at that map now and think we didn't take enough chances, actually. We should have really kind of tr like thrown something crazy at them and seen if it worked. And th this is a map where, where SK has like 16-0, 16-1 wins against some of the best teams in the world. And even that win over Astralis that we're just now talking about is one of the most impressive we've seen just because of the way they had to claw themselves back into that game. That just shows the different ways they can win, the, like the resiliency of that team to be able to stay alive in these maps and come back. Um, very impressive win from them. And also, I mean, you're not going to see the same kind of like lack of confidence that we saw in Overpass. This is going to be the real SK. This is going to be an SK who's not going to double double guess what they decide to do. That's not going to question things. They have great. They do great work on the T side. Taco and Cold working together in box halls. They're going to be dangerous. Are they dangerous enough that you're going to call them a win? Yeah, I'm taking SK on trade. 
Yeah, I think SK is going to get this one. Like, the key for me is, like, just watch where they rotate for, because when they have a good read on that CT side, they'll have him over in the other side when it's going to be an attack there. So stay in your chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see if the streak is going to end. We'll throw you back over to Anders and Semler. Thank you very much, Richard. And uh, a 17-map win streak for SK on this. But, like, some things, just like Moses, something is meant to be broken, Semler. So we'll see if it's going to be working out here for them or not. SK doing a fine <laughs> job on this map. They are, they seem to be actually unbeatable. Their CT side, definitely. The T side is what always gives you cause for concern when it comes to SK Gaming right now. And it feels weird saying it because for so long, they had such a scary terror side, regardless of the map, they, all, they were always a threat. But they're, they are struggling somewhat on the T side as well. They really do have to get that strong CT side. So it's actually almost a good thing that they start on CT, or on T rather, SK, because then they kind of get to f they get the feel of what they need to achieve in that second half. So we'll see how it pans out here, because already there's action. Oh, can't be. Trying for that shot. It's going to be Glaive to pick it up, though, Fur. Maybe a little bit of tunnel vision towards where Kebby was falling back from. Now, four versus five. They still have that little bit of utility on Cold Sierra. He's got the smoke, he's got the Molotov, but um, a good start here for Astralis would definitely go a long way. And you, I think you're right, though. SK, if they even pick up like five, six rounds on this on this first half, they know they could do it, right? They know they've got that CT sign still in their pocket. So um, we'll see how far this goes. There's a big slowdown after that first kill, if you notice. And now they're bringing the bomb all the way back here. And on the other side, though, Glaive and Sipnix are holding strong. Yeah, changing it up. I mean, Astralis have also had a very, very scary retake on that CT side, knowing exactly how to fall back and trusting in their teammates, basically, to get the job done when it comes down to getting onto that bomb and defusing it. So. Right now, SK Gaming, because they lose that first man over at Alley, they instead want to go towards the B site, which historically is easier to get the bomb plant on, but they have to charge forward and fall and taking point. He's trying to get up to Astralis and find a kill very quickly here. He is aggressive play coming out of the Brazilian captain. Can he make it work? The smokes is up as well. Glaive gonna pick up one. There's a good shot from Fall and he takes down Sip. He needs to do more. FNX is there as well has fallen right afterwards and now it's a two on three the bomb is only just down it hasn't ticked far enough they need to stay alive here the rest of sk and just keep it going great shot from gold zero dupree gets caught mid-air now the diffuse is in can they stop it oh fallen i think he could have kept that going but now glaive is going to get the kill and i don't think cold zero can get there in time he has to run for it but glaive is already on the defuse and that's going to be the round astralis will pick it up glaive with the hero defuse at the end and also the triple kill on top unbelievable Unbelievable. And the fact that he actually nearly gets it the first time around. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he couldn't have just held it there, but he, he went for the sort of the double safety and took out Fallen. With the help of a teammate, though, KB also picked up a double. A good start for Astralis. That's just chaos. And they aren't getting lucky when it comes to these chaotic situations, SK Gaming. They're going for rushes, and when it gets down to it, they aren't able to actually capitalize when it gets to the close situations. Astralis, it was the same thing on Overpass. They kept coming out ahead. Look at this. They actually got the bomb down and still they go for the buy SK. That's out of the norm. Normally you wait for the third round, then you buy AKs. Now they've gone for a second round Tech 9 armor buy. They got the grenades already raining into that bomb site. Some counter grenades coming out here for Astralis. A lot actually already being expended. And over on the other side of the map, Siplex is alone on the B site. So we'll see if he's going to be able to hold it in case they do come for him. There's still a fake going on. They're trying to get two men into the connector. But a great spray down from Glaive. And now they know what's up. This is an easy read for Astralis. As soon as they see those two people running in, they know exactly what the strat is. Should have been called out already. So the rotation is coming into the site. You need a bomb plant here, SK. At least a bomb plant to make it work. Taco, five health left. He's going to do it. So they get the kill on the bomb plant. I mean, that's a way to sort of salvage a little bit of that round, at least. But well, we've seen this sort of strategy from SK Gaming as, as in the past, where they set it up to get the split through connector, putting two, three guys through connector towards the B site. But look at this. this you get the feeling that Glaive has downloaded them, that he's just so ready for that push to come through, and that he's just going to go ahead and shoot them in the back that way. I mean, ruthless by Glaive, but still, it does. you do get a sense of Glaive just being so on point with the read. He knew exactly what was coming. The other thing is, when you make that kind of a play from SK's point of view early on in a game, you're sort of you're sort of really trying to flex your muscles a bit and say, look, we, we're so good, you're going to have trouble even in a round like this. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't work, I don't think it will ruin their, their sort of their mojo, but they've got to be careful, right? You make too many of those types of plays and suddenly your team loses a bit of confidence and maybe it's just, it, it could be harder to get back into the game later on. But it's still too early, obviously, a team with this much experience and 
having won so many titles like we saw earlier, that little border for everything that they had won, they obviously know how to keep their cool. Watching to see exactly where this is going to come from here. We're going to see the smokes pop now, that little wall that's being built. Dupree, Kirby and Glaive all in front of the wall, which means anyone trying to push through now is going to have such a hard time. They're not even really so much trying to push through, they are trying to just slither into the bomb site. Not sure about that one. I feel like that's a that's too much of a risk. Were they expecting Astralis to come look for them after the smokes went up? Yeah, I'm wondering about that as well, because Kirby is relentless. What a round! I mean, granted, this was an anti-eco round, let's be fair. But uh, still, that's, uh, that's a pretty solid one where Astralis, everybody is in position, just everybody in position to completely counter SK Gaming. Kirby with the peek over towards Alley to start things off, but then Dupree not checking corners again. Look at this. Fallen, well, that is a tough scenario for Fallen because he does want to look right towards Electric as well. So it is kind of like that 50-50. You're looking which way you're going to look first. Does, didn't work for him this time around, but still, this, this is going to rattle SK Gaming just a little bit because so far this has been... The Astralis show, it feels like. It is a strong start for the Danish side, but it's still really early days here on train. So I'm not really too panicked. I feel like SK, again, they just need a, a couple of early kills here and it should be working out all right. Taco charging into the A site. This is what he's very good at, just the aggressive running gun style. And wouldn't you know it, he's going to pick up the first kill on Glaive now that leaves Dupree isolated at the corner of the bomb site. He actually gets caught mid-air. A wonderful headshot being thrown out by Fallen there. They will lose FNX in the meantime, and the bomb is down for the moment. That's going to buy time for the rest of Astralis to show up. But this is a great setup here. But is he really going to try and flank through T-Spawn? Oh, wow. He's making that run. He's making the run all the way to A main. He's going to be the insurance. Now, the Bison Zipnix needs to stay alive at all costs. That's what this relies on. They need to truly trust in Kirby to hit that timing. Stay alive for this, and Kirby's going one step further? Is this insane? Is he going to go up through Pop Dog? Some Inception level flank coming out of Kirby right now. Do they now. think that this is a rotate to B? Are they not seeing anybody here? That's the question. Is he. Because Zipnix is in connector and he was actually worried. He was actually rotating a little bit back towards B, but that bomb has not been planted, so it's clear for Astralis now. But still, there was a moment where they didn't, weren't quite sure what was going on, it looked like. There's the one spray, Kirby. Can he refocus on Fallen? He's out there and he's going to catch him, and that's a full retake. They don't lose anybody in that 3v4. The Inception play coming out of Kirby, just going for the flank within the flank, ends up living. He hasn't even died yet in this half, and um, he's at 7-1-0. 7 one and 0 and one for uh, Glaive. Yeah, Glaive got a couple of those in the anti-eco, so still. Wow. Okay, then. There you May go. May 11th. It's the last loss against G2. It's been a while. It's been a while. But, I mean, 25-2. and two. 17 map win streak and there it is the timeout early on this time around fallen is not going to wait on overpass it took him quite a long long time before he actually decided to take the pause and have a discussion with his team here they're going for it immediately in the fifth round sk gaming realizing that uh, that last round in particular is a bit too much of a beatdown. well device yeah. well, just checking them out here so we do see the timeout but those are the two other kills that are happening on the other side there Bit of, a bit of a bump in the road here for SK. You know, you get into that position, Taco and Fallen opening up the site with those two kills. That's supposed to be a win. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, especially at that point, you should be able to just lock it down. I was kind of curious to see if SK Gaming were going to go for a quick B play here. So they haven't really gone for the B rush just yet. Instead, it's Fur quickly down Pop Dog. And Dupree getting in position to put some pressure on. He makes sure, checking his angles, at least he's being thorough. But he has to watch his back, Glaive and Dupree both just a little exposed from Pop Dog here. Dupree, gonna go check the main real quick and doesn't spot anyone. He's not gonna commit to it. You could do that too if you're Dupree. You can go and just camp in main if, if you feel like that's gonna give you the edge. Glaive is also checking out Pop Dog, so a slow start here for SK, not really trying to be aggressive anywhere on the map. Yeah, this is where Glaive has to take a deep breath. You can't really take any risks here by going up the ladder or anything like that. Even going this aggressive is just a little bit risky. But this positioning is really solid for Glaive, just to say, because if they start running through white halls into brown halls, or if SK make any kind of noise, he's close enough to hear that and give an early warning over to his two teammates, Zipnix and Device, who are holding on the B site. So Glaive trying to go for just a little bit of a clever play here. And in fact, there are two of them stacked up because he's got Dupree watching his back. He can fully focus on Pop Dog at this point. 
just scary to be this close to pistols. I mean, sure, rifles with the AKs, yeah, fair enough. But if they have Tech Nines and you're up this close, you can be dead in an instant. Yeah, the one advantage of being this close is that most pop flashes go deeper than this. So Glaive will have a lot, lot of time to turn around if they try and pop flash it. But it looks like they're going to make their way towards the B bomb side. Device repositioning himself to try and get a clearer shot at anyone crossing over that bomb. But they're actually there on the sidewalk, flashing their way through. They line up for Sip, and he's going to be up two big kills there. Going for a third one. He's almost out of health. Backup is coming as well. And now just falling left. And he was in the back line with no time left. Five seconds. He actually has to try and die before the time runs out here. We'll do that successfully. So nobody goes down. Oh my god, look at the money on Astralis here. Yeah, it's starting to take off. Two players starting with more than 10,000 in the bank before the revive on the on the grenades. I mean, that's, that is that is the strength of Glaze's position as well. Look at how quickly he's able to rotate in here and save Zipnix. Because they're in both in Pop Dog like that, they just go charging through. And so even if they get the bomb plant, sure, there's just it's, it's impossible for SK to win the round at that point. Although Zipnix spraying down too certainly helps Astralis. Man, 5-0 lead right now for Astralis. I mean, sure, I said, you know, hey, SK, they get some rounds, and they'll know how much they have to do in the second half when they get into that CT side. Uh, you have to get some rounds, SK. You actually have to get on the board. Yeah, that was the premise, wasn't it? We needed we needed that much. But I mean, we're only a third of the way into the half here, but a great start device taking out Fallen. That is a strong way to get off. Now, FNX. Maybe. Does he feel like following it up? He's just going to smoke it off for the moment. And what have they done so far when SK Gaming have lost a man early on? They've rotated over towards B with that bomb to see if they can't get the bomb plant. And it looks like they aren't going to waste any time this time. Taco just charges forward. He's going to get spotted by Zipnix out of the open, looking for that one tap headshot. But Zipnix is staying alive. And Zipnix just needs to stay alive because he hasn't spotted the bomb. That bomb is going to get planted now. And now the rotation should come through from his teammates. But his teammates weren't taking any risks by over rotating off the A site either. Definitely not. FNX is really far behind the rest of his team. That could be a huge win later on. But right now, the ADC need to defend this bomb. They're quite far back in the site, which I'm not always a fan of, but they're doing good damage at the moment. Taco very nearly out of the round. If they have any grenades left, they could have taken him out already. Dupree will pick up the kill. Three versus four. SK need this. They need to hold on to it now. Two versus four. It can still be done. The smoke is down in front. They don't know full serious here. He's going to pick up the one kill. Wild spray coming through. He can't survive. Going to end up going down to Kirby. And the defuse will happen. Kirby has a kit, and it's just going to be in the last second. 6-0 and here, and a great retake coming out of Astralis. I'm just loving Zonic, man. Zonic is not going to have a voice left. I mean, if you make it to the final, Zonic, you do need to have just a little bit of a voice to keep shouting like this. We'll get him some peppermint tea, Samla. The secret. The secret. Just gave away our secret on Stream Anders. I tweeted it earlier. <laughs> I've begun the age of peppermint tea in esports. It's it's actually saving everybody right now. It is pretty sick. Seventh round is going to be coming up here, and honestly, my preferred the preferred thing that I've seen from SK, not just on this one, but previously on Train Two, is unleashing Taco on that A bomb side. I want to see Taco with an AK run and gun style take some heads out there. He is gearing up for it as well, and I think this is this is a solid choice. Taco is, in, to my mind, a really reliable player when it comes to this stuff, but not when he's been double-naded, my god. Yeah, they see that smoke going down, that's the thing, Astralis. They're reacting to it, they held onto their nades, and when that smoke went down, they just started chucking him into A main, so Taco gets tagged down to 22. Now the rest of his teammates trying to push into the site, and Dupree gonna win the duel versus Taco, drops him. They do at least get a bomb plant down. Kirby again with the flank coming out of Ivy this time. All the way into main and easy killer. And Cold Sierra, he's going to try and double up. He gets the one, but he can't get Cold Sierra. Turns around with a 180. That's a very important shot. Still a two on four. Can they finally get around here, SK? They're getting another kill. Glaive is down and out. Sip is coming in from Pop Dog, but you're not in time. Device will already have gotten the kill. Cold Sierra now in a one on two. He gets the one headshot, but already with the defuse. Kavai's going to hold it in. And Cold Sierra, he gets the triple, but he cannot win the round. Just too many targets there. Seven rounds in a row for Astralis. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. This is unbelievable how close it's getting. I mean, how many times do we have to go down to the wire between both of these teams? I mean, there have been a couple, well, there have been actually quite a few rounds, three rounds, in fact, where they survive with more than four players of Astralis, but then the other ones just feel like such nail biters that it makes up for it. It makes you think that this entire time it's been Astralis just barely hanging in there. When in fact it's SK who are just barely trying to hang on. Astralis are crushing their fingers. They're hanging on the edge of a cliff right now, Anders. This is a bit of a beating that they're taking right now. Probably should consider a second timeout soon-ish because the team morale has got to be a little bit low. They lost the first map, and it's a really good map for them on overpass. And now they're not really getting any traction on this one. 
So eventually people will start to get frustrated. This is what I was waiting for. Now they're going to try and go for the B site without losing a man first, right? They're just going to go for it, fully commit, and they do actually get down onto the site. The only problem is they haven't cleared Zipnix out of upper halls. And so Zipnix could ruin their day here. Yep, easy shot. Going to get the follow-up as well. And man, that's so painful. Zipnix has been playing passive on the site, so you understand why SK are not checking up there. They're thinking he's going to be way back over by Connector. But that one oversight just cost them massively. Two kills for free for Zipnix. This is why you need a timeout. This is why you need people to be thinking clearly and not just sort of, you know, Assuming. focusing, yeah, too hard on everything. You just end up tunnel visioning and it doesn't work out. One versus four at the moment for making the noise, but regardless, he would have to take four duels here to try and win all of them and 30 seconds left. That's just not going to happen. It's not enough time. Device has got the angle on upper as well with the AWP, so as soon as he shows himself there, it's over. And he's been blocked in as well by Glaive holding Pop Dog. So. There's one way out, and that's through White Halls. And while he's not interested in that, he's going to look forward to see if he can actually take this fight. There's the shoulder peak. Zipnix has spotted him. 14 seconds left. And at this point, Fur is just thinking, I have to go and die. I need that money. And Gabby's going to oblige. 8 0 -oh lead right now. 8 and 0. Oh. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? I'm just listening to Sonic yelling. Well, you can actually, you have the benefit of actually understanding Danish, seeing a Dane yourself. Saying, so. Sick round, guys. Sick round. <laughs> Um, it's the best that he can do, right? He's not actually able to talk to them, so he's just shouting really loudly. Why not? There you go. 11, 1-1 one one as a scoreline here for Kierbu. This whole playoffs for uh, the whole playoff, I mean, even the quarterfinals group for semifinal here, he's been incredible, hasn't he? And you're starting to see the true potential of this player and maybe the reason they picked him up originally. That's the 12th kill being picked up here for him and not the best start again for SK, and he's out again, down an Ivy. These information plays, they're worth so much. He almost catches out FNX, who's down there. Now he's going to smoke it off instead of just buy time. Is he really going to try and run through? Oh, the fake. I like it, but this might cost him. He just barely makes it around the corner in time. And he has the follow-up smoke as well. Just a little bit playing with fire there, Kirby. But I like the mind game. Did you see it? Did you hear that? He goes for the run just to make the noise. If anybody was holding close on the other side of that smoke, they'd have been stressed a little bit there. Four versus four right now. Taking past the minute mark. Still a half by for SK Gaming in this round as well, keep in mind. Device and Sip are holding over at B, so they've got a little group there. Kirby and Glaive are so close to main that if anyone tried to smoke like they are right now, all those smokes land behind them. They don't really do, really do anything. So everything comes down now to the engagement between Kirby and Glaive. If they can take one kill, they can almost 100% take the other one. But if they lose the first frag here and make it a 3-4, that's not good. And there's Glaive. They almost line up. They're going to get the one now. Kirby, very isolated. He still sprays down. Two goes for third. Oh my god. That's a quad kill. He's looking for the ace. Falling going to miss the shot. We've got 23 seconds and Sip going to be there to help him out. But what a godlike performance here from a very young player. 15, 1 and 1 event against the best team in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you can see it there clear as day. I hope we get it in replay as well. This is the first kill that he managed to pick up at the beginning, right? That's beautiful. But he just, he knows exactly what's coming. So he spots the first man and he's already pre-firing the second and the third. He knows they're going to be close together. SK are so on point when it comes to spacing. And so Kyrbi is just like, well, just spray mouse one, control my spray, and hope that they walk right into it. And they did. There's the timeout. Second timeout being used here by SK Gaming. Just to remind you, they have four 30-second timeouts that they can use at any point in the map, and so they're on their second one now. But I guess you're down 9-0. <laughs> timeout every round, boys. We need to figure this out. Yeah, now you have to think about what's the, what's the minimum buffer that they need, SK. Let's assume they can win the pistol on the second half. What's the minimum buffer they need? They, they do need at least four rounds. I think, I think if it turns into 4-11, we're not going to call it, we're obviously never going to call it, but at this, but still, if they get f less than four rounds, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I think that's too far-fetched, basically, even for SK, even on train. Flashbangs go out, device falling back. He's trying to reposition a little bit. Does spot out that uh, smoke in the corner. <laughs> what a flick to take out FNX. He's just that fast today, it seems. Device is on point, and Device with the follow-up. Took him a second, but he gets a shot on Fallen. He just wanted to keep us guessing there for a moment, but SK Gaming, after the timeout, they're clearly trying to make something happen there. And Fallen, trying to be the hero for his team, trying to go for the individual play to bring it back, and they get slapped, SK Gaming. They're down two players. They have a single smoke and a single flash.
to work with here to try and create some kind of opportunity with a minute left on the clock. And that was very clean by device. At least the first kill, because he, had hits by the, he gets hit by the smoke grenade as well. He wasn't really, I mean, not that they needed it, but he wasn't doing much on overpass. He was at the bottom of the scoreboard. It was everybody else who was helping out. Now he's close to the top here. 11 kills on him and just one death. And to make that 12, in fact, Dupree going to be going down in return, but two versus four. And SK, they're, now they are starting to seem panicked and a little bit broken as a team. I feel like there's just not that uh, focus that we've been seeing from them in the past. A nice headshot from Cold Sierra. Two versus three, 22 seconds left. They're trying to move a little bit closer, but now they're running out of time. They just don't have time to play this game. They need to get up and get these kills, and Sip gonna pick up one. Leaves Taco one versus three, and he has to either save the AWP or get himself killed in the next 10 seconds. It's gonna be it. I, I want to see, I want to see a fast push out in yard from SK again. I want Taco Unleashed. That's the only thing that I care about now from SK's point of view. I think that's what they have. That's the weapon they have. That's that he's so good at opening up that yard. Yeah, he is, but the way that they've been using him is with that smoke right here down this angle that Device is looking. Between the green train and the red train there. <laughs> They're having a ball right now. So. Well, I mean, you're up 10-0 against SK Gaming. I mean, that's, that's a feel-good moment for you. But they once they get that smoke down, Taco gets flashed through, and that's, the, that's usually the play that SK go for. Seems like SK, however, with the aggressive smoke, they're not going to waste any time at all. It might be a straight B play, although Taco is the only one over here for now. Thought we might have just the straight rush, no fear, only dreams, get onto the B side at all costs kind of play. Instead, Ouch. they get a handful of uh, shrapnel. Yeah, that one went over the wall as well. That was Sip all the way from inside the bomb site, putting that one out. Astralis. They have, their money is once again out of control. They just have way too much cash in the bank. So we'll see. The 11th round is coming up here. They're trying to make it way down sidewalk. A little bit slow, in fact, creeping their way in, but they run into the vice. Glaive is well going to be there in the corner and sit picking up one, two, then three. And it will be an 11th round here. SK, the most they have is seven on Cold Sierra. And he's got 15, one and one on Kiebu. 11 and 0. And now it's the force, and we're seeing the depths that SK Gaming are plumbing at this point because Taco's gone for a P90. We're live with the round. And yeah, Taco with a P90 just to have a few more nades to work with here. And SK, just go for the straight B rush. YOLO, just go. Run, don't stop. Don't stop for anything. Charge him down. Well. That smoke and then the follow-up flash does slow them down a little bit. Now Sip, he hears them coming. Back up is being called for. Glaive is on the side as well. Great headshots again. Glaive trying to fall back. Falling going to catch him. This is what we need out of SK. There's the spray down. Fur will take care of you. And now Dupree and Device left. Two on four. Great power coming out of SK. They need much more of that. Now it's focus time. They have the one on three and it's Device still left. They can't give it up to him. There should be no way for him to win this. Especially with the AWP. With an AK, perhaps. I mean, if he can get the shot here on Fallen. Let's go. Nope, Fallen. Too wise. Too wise. Just makes some noise and backs off. And now they're going to just block him in. There's now nowhere for Device to go. Fallen has got the exit. And so it's more a matter of Device staying alive than anything. Nice shot there from Cold. But you kind of expect that from Cold. He is a monster after all. There we go. All right, they hunt him. And they've broken the streak. Now, Anders, you said it. They need the four rounds. Arc yeah. SK capable now. Fallen saves the op as well. That's a detail that we should take note of because they didn't have the op before and they wouldn't have had the money to buy the op as well. But now, can SK run it to get, like, run the last three rounds in this half together? If they, I mean, if they win the next two, then they almost get the, 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 the well, they get one for free almost. I think they get the third one for free because then Astralis will really will be running out of money at that point in time. So it's not impossible. Fallen also got a triple kill in that round. It's very good to see. I mean, that, that has to be, I think, the, the sort of the basic feature of this. Taco gets taken out before they even get anywhere close. They're still trying to make that play for the smoke work, but they've lost two people. And now it's a five versus three. The flashbangs are raining in. Astralis, just the counter grenades are so powerful right now. And obviously that early kill from Device taking the tip off the spear. And now it's actually a three on three. 
in the flashes. Cold and Fallen pick up a kill. He's and Fallen trying for that flick and almost taking out Glaive, but he doesn't get it. And now that leaves FNX. Alone to clutch at 1v3 with a minute 14 left on the clock. That's a good thing. Keep that in mind. He has a lot of time to work with here, but it doesn't matter. Device comes out of nowhere and takes him down. 12-1. It was a short-lived dream for SK Gaming. There was some hope there, Anders, but then Vikings, after all, Astralis, right? No mercy, not a shred. In fact, they enjoy watching the suffering of SK Gaming right now. The pain. And it's true, they haven't lost train in seven months, and uh, as the tweet is saying, then, they're definitely getting a, a, a bit of a lesson here, and uh, it's almost never, it's no matter who they're playing against, we almost never see SK really tumble. Uh, other top teams have been known to the past. We've seen Navi do it a couple of times, you know? Sure, collapse, where they, yeah. yeah. where they just can't make their way back. But SK notoriously have been mentally very strong. Scout shot coming out. If that had been an AWP, then that would have been device gone. They're putting everything into this round here. 12-1. And we're in the 14th round, trying for another beat push. But look at the flank coming in from Kirby. He's hauled away in T-spawn. That's the key here. And Glaive has already rotated over as well. Three players soon to be on the site. Fallen does find the kill on Dupree, however. So that's going to create some space for SK. But then Zipnix through the smoke will get one spray. And that opens it up for Glaive to get the flank on Taco. This is all over the place. Zip with the drive-by. Survives with one HP. He's still here. And then Cold, the force of nature. We might actually have it work out for once, SK Gaming. In the chaos. They should succeed here. Trying for it. Cold gonna get a great kill in there. Running and gunning, and that will be 12-2. SK, they win one, and uh, now a second one. Getting a little bit of money into the 15th round. It's still gonna be incredibly uphill, but they're starting something. Bit surprised to see Dupree get picked off so early like that, though. With all three alive on the site, it looked like a perfect situation there for Astralis to just clamp down on SK. But Zipnik's not able to get a kill initially, and Dupree gets picked off for free. And especially with Kirby coming in with the flank, you would think that there was almost no pressure on them to, to fight, or just, they just wait for him to show up and wreck the party. Oh, three main and two uh, brown halls. Taco over here at brown halls, but he should be able to make his way back around eventually. Unless device? Nope. He's there with the AWPs. Very aggressive setup. They gotta be careful. They don't give him an opportunity there right there, and he catches Cold with a grenade in hand. Out timed. And Kirby will be going down and return. That's Fallen picking up that shot with the AK. They gotta have this round, SK, and they, they know it. All the pressure is on them right now. A lot of grenades coming in here, trying to maybe go up the high ground here. Glaive, he's still waiting for it. It's a four on four with FNX being quite low. The bomb gonna get denied. Dupree, what a great boost coming out of Astralis here. Improvised just as the bomb is about to go down. That leaves it in a four on three. And now the bomb will finally be planted, but everybody's here. Good shot from Glaive, gonna be taken down. FNX, Fur, and Taco left. Two versus four, making the two on three. Spray comes through, Taco picks up one. They need this, Taco with a double kill, and Device not quite hitting the shot. He's gonna take down Fur. And now Taco, can he close up what he started? He can, triple kill. A great round from Taco. Gonna give SK a third round in this half. It's obviously not quite enough, but we'll see if they can make it work. We're gonna go to a quick break. We'll be back right after with the second half.
back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to head into the second half, second map here for semi-finals of E-League Season 2 with Astralis simply knocking it out the park and finishing 12-3 in the first half on train against SK, who are undefeated for seven months on this particular map. And apparently we missed a flashbang kill at the end of 10th round. I did not see that, so apologies for that one. But um, apparently Glaive got one. I hope we can find a replay eventually. We are seeing Device playing very well with 110 ADR. Cold Sierra, who is doing the best of his team, he's really trying to bring his team back into this. Fallen as well, but the rest of the team have simply disappeared at this point in time. It's now or never. If they don't win the pistol, then there's nothing to talk about. No, there isn't. But also the fact that Glaive took this map knowing full well SK Gaming's record on it, knowing that they have an indomitable CT side. Well, Astralis, and most particularly Glaive, has to have an answer for it. There has to be a reason why. And he's given himself and his team the best chance possible to set it up. 12 to 3, and FNX gets annihilated immediately by Kirby. So the young star, he's still at it. And the push begins. No time wasted. Cold flashed. They need to find another kill here, Astralis, to give themselves some space to work with, though. And Kirby's going to spot a second man over by Ali. Gets the drop on Fallen but he can't hit the shot. Fallen is so isolated. He's going to be going down first. They're all around him. He's getting surged at the moment. And Taco alone, one versus five. Just too much of an ask for him right here. He's going to get the one kill. He actually hits that mid-air shot. But the bomb is down and they're all around him. They're not even afraid to peek him right now. What could he possibly do? Astralis, I mean, this is, this is a way to cement the victory. Normally, this team, again, they have a habit of stumbling right at the end, but this time they're leaving nothing to chance. Are we about to see... I mean, this already, they had the most difficult top half bracket... Yes. ...that we've seen in a while. But Astralis, this is incredible. They've taken down Nip, and they're on the brink of taking down SK in a semi-final, A, breaking that streak, getting into a final again and giving themselves a strong chance at winning E-League, but also dumpstering SK Gaming on SK Gaming's strongest map, one of the strongest runs we've had on any map by any team. And we have the flashbang kill coming up for you guys. Just Anders, pay attention. Don't look away. I'm looking. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my very best. Okay. He's at 34 HP. It ha Wait, how does, how does he kill him when he has 34 HP? Yeah, I think that's why we missed it. Yeah. Wait, hold on. What the, happened here? Is that a is there a bug somehow in the in the replay? I am so confused. Wait, does somebody shoot him at the exact same time? How does he get a, how do how? That shouldn't happen. I am so confused. But thank you everyone on Twitter for pointing it out. Definitely appreciate it. That's hilarious. I did not see that. I just obviously assumed it was like an HE or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 13 to 3 is the scoreline, and I guess we could say that uh, Taco got CS go. Yes, apparently he did. How do SK bring this one back? That that wall that they put up on the CT side, obviously, it has to be built with something. And well, so he said, 75 kill to start off is not a bad way to get going, but they need some tools here to really make this work. A little bit of noise there, Taco. He heard that. Now he has to worry about upper. And Cold Zero is going to rotate back. Fur thinking about going up Pop Dog, but he's going to fall back over to the A site and they're going to stick to this SK Gaming. This is all on Taco now. And he, he manages to pick up the first kill already. Can't be instant trade from him. Gets the headshot to start things off. And Zipnix will catch the rotators out as well. Somehow Astralis are fighting back into this round. Yeah, they are. Two versus three, though. A little bit of uh, lack of health on SK, though. Cold Zero and Fur both quite low at the moment, but no bomb plant. That's what they really need. Fur is creeping up even before the bomb is attempted. That's a big risk, and maybe it's going to actually work out. He's got the drop on device. who's trying to get that bomb plant down. Second kill of the round for Fur, and now that leaves Sip, and he drops a Fallen. And they pick it up. A big win here, a big investment. I mean, everything invested into this round for SK, but it worked out. Ah, there we go, and we finally hear them shout. Well, I mean, they haven't really had too much reason to shout so far this map, but that was an important round. And again... <laughs> The CT side, the CT side for SK, they actually make it work. That was deserving of a shotgun. Thank you very much, Daily. I, I mean, 13 to four, Astralis still with a tremendous lead and a hard eco coming in actually from Astralis as well. They want to get right back into the fight here. But uh, I can't help but say that there is a small side of me that does believe just a little bit, SK, you know, that SK can do this on the CT side and run it back. You're a terrible human being, Sam. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Anything is possible. I mean, Danish Counter-Strike, man. Hell of a drug. This, this is very true. And very many people would lose their minds if uh, this did not end up with a win.
But you can't take anything for granted. You're going to have to fight for it here. And not necessarily in this round. They only have Glocks on the device. Just to be the old one out. P250. Some bullets been rained in there. Maybe could be a bomb plant here. They're certainly trying for it. Sip. Don't think they can stop him. And that's a very effective round. They get a bomb plant in. Dupree even gets a kill on Fur for some reason. And dropping a little bit local. Zero clocked in the head. Long range. What a fantastic round from the Astralis. Look at this Glaive. Glaive. Oh, he does get the kill eventually, but that definitely looked a little bit too scary. Kirby nearly uh. drops. Who was that? Cold down to 6 HP. But still, I mean, that was as, as close to a hard eco as you can get. I think one guy picked up, Kirby picked up a P250. That's $300 investment. They invested $300 in that round of Astralis. They get two kills, nearly three, and a bomb plant. That's solid. And again, deserving of a shotgun. 13 to 5 is the scoreline, but yeah, you're right. They they lost too many people in that round, and the bomb plant helping out Astralis quite a bit. Moving into the 19th round, let's see what they could do. They are playing against Fallen's AWP, and they don't have one themselves. And actually, Fallen's really been stepping it up in the last couple of rounds. He's now top fragging on SK's side with 13 kills. And Taco's also getting up there. Whoa. Whoa, what is this? They're never going to expect this. Does it work, though? One for one trade already. So aggressive from Astralis. Nothing to announce their presence. They're already out onto the A site nearly. SK, they've got to scramble. Need to get in here. Taco trying to get out of the smoke. He's going to be going down. Sipnix with the kill. Now the bomb plant happening in Dupree. Can he stay alive in the corner? Is he going to flash his way through? He tries for it. He actually just swaps right into C Connector, so doesn't even go and fight them. Three on three, and SK, they're pushed all the way back here. They need to get out in front and fight right now, otherwise too much time is going to run off this clock. They don't even realize the pre here. This position is genius. He's going to be taking Kirby down. That's Colts here with the shot. Now they're trying for the defuse, and Dupree gets taken out. Can't do anything. Defuse inside the smoke. That was, that should have been a much better positional play there. It was so good, but he just, I don't think he realized there was someone in the smoke diffusing. Nobody, at that point, it's Astralis that are trying, they're not playing to win the round, they're trying to not to lose the round. Does that make any sense to you? Where nobody wants to be the one to make the mistake that cost the team the round at that point when a three on three with the bomb down. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I think, the, the problem is the strength of that position is so big because he should have been able to hear someone tapping the bomb with the defuse, right? And as soon as he does that, he should be able to call for Sipnix to come out of Pop Dog and spray through the smoke, and he should be able to follow it up, right? But I don't think he heard it. I think everything was on that one thing, whether or not he heard it. It's just... No, that's a little bit of shame there for Kirby, but... Yeah, that's, that's just a tough scenario, but I do get a distinct feeling that nobody on Astralis wanted to to be the one to overextend and to throw the round, but in the end, SK Gaming, yeah, you can't give them that kind of room to work with. Yeah, but they can only they can only really go for for that overextension as soon as, like, someone has to make the call that someone's diffusing, right? So I think they were just all waiting for that. They were all waiting and saying, when is the diffuse happening? Like, is anyone on? No one's heard anything. And then they were all just waiting forever. Oh, man. That could have been it. But now, SK... Knocking out that round and looking to take a seventh one here. Only losing Fur, who did pick up a quad kill. So all good news for them. Now, gap is closing ever so slowly. Yeah, ever so slowly is right. Still six rounds separating both of these teams. 13 to 7 for Astralis. And, well, they get to have the rifles again. And I'm curious to see if they're going to go for that kind of crazy all-out play again. SK Gaming should not get caught off guard. This time, they have all of the nades necessary to cut out any kind of early rush. They have the anti-rush nades and spades here for SK Gaming, so... Astralis, it might have to be where you put yourself in that pressure situation where you go for the default and look for contact, which is very tricky against SK on CT side. Yeah, now I really hope Astralis use their timeouts well in this sort of comeback phase for SK. That's when they need to break up their momentum and they need to refocus their own team, make sure they don't just let it spiral out of control, so... We'll see it. Not this time. They're going to go for the AKs and the AWP here, but at some point they do need to remember to take some of those timeouts and take a deep breath. A four-man set up in a bomb site with Taco alone, which is very common. Going to go for the run ah. booster, or not quite the run booster. They just jump over there, but Fallen saw it. Yeah, Fallen. If he'd have been holding from the right, he would have missed it, but he's holding from the left, and so there's no element of surprise there for Astralis. Smokes and Incendiary is going in now with a minute left on this clock, but they still have quite a bit of utility here left, Astralis. That's not a full commit just yet. They still have options. But this is where it is going to be go time. The smoke execute going through. They're quite, they're getting in position at main 
to make the play. Dupree checking to make sure that nobody has flanked through Alley, but with these smokes down now, Astralis, there's 40 seconds left. This is starting to get a little tricky because these smokes, they aren't really doing anything. Uh, what is happening here? I'm wondering, yeah, they're only, I think there may have been a disconnect, and since no one's there, there was actually an SK side, there was a disconnect there. So because no one's gone down yet, no one's, uh, no one's been killed, they are just going to sort of cancel the round here. Sip is um, out for a bit of an adventure, but that's a uh, fair play to everybody around there. The rule is that if someone dies in the round, then, you know, the round is officially live. But since no one had died, it's, it's you know, just gentleman's agreement or also, I think, the tournament rules to, to sort of replay it. But people have been doing that forever, basically. Curious what's actually happening here. If we can get an update, that would be nice. But I think the admin is in a bit of a conversation with Fallen right now. Looks like Fallen was trying to get a restroom break or something. He was about to walk off the stage. I have no idea what happened there. All right, it's looking fairly heated, but definitely uh, a serious discussion going on at the moment. 13 to 8 is the scoreline here. Real question is, um, what do Australis do when they get back into it? That was a fairly slow round that they were setting up, right? That was. I mean, it actually looked a little confusing. I'm wondering if there was uh, some kind of conversation going on where SK were calling for the stop because it doesn't make any sense. Those like, t So you have the execution on Alley and then you have the nades going in from Pop Dog and then nobody moves. And in fact, they start like milling about. So clearly just as they pull the trigger, SK are like stop or pause or yeah. something. They told them something had happened in the round. So that threw us Astralis off clearly. Question, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a sort of, I mean, it does just throw the, the round out of whack. And it also, this should be frustrating for Glaive as well because he just kind of showed his hand a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to tell who this is worse for. It's always, it's, this is always like sort of a guessing game, right? But at the same time, SK, they're building that wall on the, on the CT side, right? They're up to winning five rounds in a row and uh, they probably just want to continue. We are going to go to a quick break and we'll be back right after we fix the technical issues. So stay with us.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 13-7 is the scoreline here. We did restart the round. In case you aren't just joining us, we are on the second map of the first semi-finals here between Astralis and SK. And it was a just a blazing first half for Astralis. They won it 12-3, and then they won the pistol on the second half. And you think, that's it. It's done with. But SK, they forced up second round. Then they won five in a row. And suddenly, we're at 13-7. So who knows what will happen now? I mean, in a, it's, it feels really scrappy, like the beginning of the first half as well. This has been a lot of aggression from Astralis, a lot of quick plays, really just trying to go crashing through the defense on SK and breaking them fast. But you have to, at, at some point, your Glaive is going to have to start slowing the game down a little bit and going back to defaults. And that, well, we, that's what we saw in the round, in the last round before the technical pause there, uh, where Glaive he had his teammates spread across the map and they were going to go for a more stable default kind of execute onto A. And we see that again here, actually. Three players towards Alley this time around for Astralis. And in the meantime, Zipnik's clearing out Brown Halls. This looks to me like they want to fight Fallen down at Ivy. They, they have Device there with them with the AWP. It looks like they're ready to try and take the battle uh, to his door instead. Gonna smoke off the one side, and Fallen is right there. He's gonna put up a smoke of his own just to buy some time. The bomb is quite far back, so yeah, I think they were just out for a, for a bit of a hunting mission there. Just a lot of noise being made. They were definitely looking for that first pick, but Fallen, too wise. No real follow-up behind the nade usage, though, so now they're going to have to rely heavily on Dupree, Glaive, and Zipnix to get maximum value out of those grenades. Even if they wanted to go for the A cut across, right, the default A smokes, all three of them, and then that leaves still the, the gap between green and red train, the gap towards alley, like a lot of free room for SK Gaming to work with here, so... Curious to see what Astralis have in store for us. 45 seconds left on this clock now, and they have yet to start any real push. They haven't seen anybody on SK. They, they, don't, they don't know what's going on here. It's going to come down to the opening in that case. I mean, SK setup is not so great for this, but a great start for Fallen. Going to take out KRB before they even make it into the A yard. Now the push is coming through. The smokes are down. Fallen finding a second kill. They finally get the refrag on FNX, but Fallen alive in the corner, and he's really come alive in this game now. Just shows the barrel of the gun while Fen El Fern called Sira pick up a kill each and device, nothing he could do with 10 seconds left. Gonna try and fall back and he should be able to save the AWP, but I mean, that's just fallen closing out that push immediately. Yeah, I mean, it is. And it also leaves me wondering what was the purpose apart from making some noise of that A side. Nice shot there at the end catches Taco, but still. I, uh, over towards Alley, right? What was going on with all those nades and then the slow wait and then an imperfect push? I mean, this is just tough, though. I mean, the fact that Fallen is holding that angle A main aggressive follow-up as well is unfortunate. I mean, I don't know. It just felt uh, just a little disjointed. And Astralis right now, we just have to hope that they're going to be able to keep it together because after such a phenomenal first half, you did all of that work. You cannot let it start getting to your head not able to get, to close it out here. And finally, we have a tactical timeout being used here by Astralis. Enough is enough. And this is where we get a glimpse into how much has changed on this team, because it's clear some of the players are being utilized better, right? Kirby is really on fire th for this game and has been throughout the whole tournament. So that's great. Sip seems to be back to his old great level and Device is definitely fragging uh, at a high pace. But now, how's the mental state? Can they suffer a loss? We're now looking at six rounds in a row here, or five rounds in a row. Can they continue to lose rounds or are they eventually gonna completely break down? That's an open question. We may get the answer today and obviously, uh, everyone who's an Astralis fan, we're hoping that, that, that this has solved it, that Glaive is enough to have to have changed things for them. They can not just be sort of a tactical leader, but also be a you know, morale leader here. What's fantastic, Anders, as well, is that Kerrigan is on the other side of the bracket. Yeah. The second semifinal of the day, FaZe versus Optic, and Kerrigan is there. There is a world in which Astralis and Kerrigan could face in the finals of a tournament here at E-League. That, that world does exist. It's possible. It's possible. 13 to 8. Astralis, T-side still, and really spread out once again. Just all across the map, looking for the aggression here from SK Gaming and not. Look at the boost that's going on in main. They really want Fallen to come and peek them here. I think the Vice right now, his aim is just to fight Fallen somewhere, but before that can happen, oh no, he misses that shot. And that might be the one chance that they had to equalize it here. Fallen knows that AWP is down there. He's gonna be creeping in, looking for the kill, but they've already lost Kirby, one of the really impact killers of uh, the Astralis side so far. Four versus five at the moment, and we're now way below 50 seconds here. Everyone on SK's side just holding strong. Device, he continues. He's just looking for this fight everywhere he can, but he's just never finding it. Cold Zero will take him down eventually and finds a headshot on Glaive. And now Dupree and Sip are left. One versus five. 
This is this is a problem that's very hard to deal with if you're a star. You were just trying a round where you tried to execute and Fallen was there to take the fight to you early on. Then right afterwards, you spent almost all of the round looking for the fight against him and he's nowhere. He just can't they can't find anyone in that yard. A few telltale signs. I am gonna say that I am a little bit worried seeing Device miss a shot like that. That's gotta be a hundred percent shot. Just nail it and back off. So calm down, Device. Deep breath. And let's see if you're gonna be able to do it here. Not gonna be this round. Although Astralis have won these kinds of half by rounds in the past because there is less pressure on them to get something done. You just run in with the pistols, run and gun, and just swarm the defense. But in the next round, it's going to be really interesting to see what Astralis have in store for us here. They need a bomb plant, Anders. They have to get a bomb plant this round. They need that money. We'll see if they can close the distance with the Tech Nines. Sure, this can work out for a great counter flash coming out. He's going to try for the spray a little bit. has his there. He eventually goes down, but the rest of SK are there to close it out. And that will be a double kill for Fallen once again. He's up to 21. Just in the space of six or seven rounds, he's caught up and is now almost about to overtake Sip, who's a 22 on the other team. This is, I mean, this is the beauty of SK on this map. They just lock it down. Wow, yeah, especially when you're using their own strats against them. Fallen is just giggling to himself. <laughs> I know what happens next. Fur with the perfectly timed flash as well. Flashes two players, just throws a wrench at things for Astralis. And then Fallen knowing exactly how to pick it apart with that AWP, 13 to 10. And well, it's starting to get within the realm of possibility here that SK Gaming they make this happen. There we go. Device is rewarded for his patience this time around, and he knows that somebody's holding close electric as well, so there's some good information. The follow-up, hoping to get the wall bang as well, but they actually have the man advantage now, Astralis, in this round. This is so important. A flash out as well, but does he realize Taco's right behind him in the smoke? Sip is going to be waiting for it. Taco still hits the headshot. How could it be possible? That should have been it, but it's not, and now it's back in a four on four. And first sneaking up, he does catch someone with a grenade in hand. Otherwise, Device maybe could have got that kill. Flashbang goes out here. Taco trying to buy time, but he can't. Kirby will be taking him down. Four versus three. A chance finally in the second half for Astralis to actually have an impact here. They're putting out the grenades. They're trying to force them back. They even have that man advantage. And the Molotov on just to try and force out Glaive, but there's no one there to catch him as he swings out from behind the train. Fur, FNX, and Cold Sierra. This is going to be a near impossible retake, especially now that Fur is out of the round. Cold Sierra and FNX, maybe time to think about saving these guns. Yeah, they haven't overextended either, but it's still possible for FNX. It's crazier things happened in the past. Looking for the shot. Big spray battle here from Debray, but he will eventually find the kill on FNX, and it's on Cold Zera now with the 1v4 on his hands, and more importantly, he's trying to save this op, but he gives it away. Slave spots him. Midair duck hunting. Cold Zera, he gets the shot. We'll survive with the AWP. Nicely done. But the most important thing here is that Astralis have finally done it. They've broken the streak. 14 rounds on the board here for Astralis now. And the, the pressure has just ratcheted up a notch here on SK Gaming. Uh, good news for Device as an individual player. You know, you said it. He, he missed that shot the previous round. This time he steps right back in with a great double kill in the round. And 14 to 10. So able to adjust, able to keep his, his nerves under control, which has been a problem for him in the past as well. Just individually, he struggled with that sort of thing. Mm. Oh, I love it. Hey, Fallen. Boom, headshot. And no, fall no possible? No possible retake as well. The anti-flashes are just too good. Fallen will brook no nonsense on this map. He is on CT side, and this is his turf. Somehow, Zipnix tries to bring it back, and it looks like he got tagged up a lot there by Taco. But the aggression alley, the flash setup, just perfect counter here from SK Gaming, taking the fight right back to Astralis. Incredible. If you if you approach that corner with an AWP and there are three people on the other side, you're supposed to go down. You know, maybe you trade it, but you're supposed to die fairly early on, and that obviously did not happen. FNX casual wall bang attempt there. Now they are setting up just where he was shooting, so if he tries it again, it could be a success. Four versus five and 50 seconds left here. They are starting to bring more and more people over to where Sipnix is inside of the B-bomb site. But the thing is, Fur and Taco, they have such a strong setup with this, uh, just with what they've got here. Taco still has a Molotov and Fur has one as well. Yeah, they both do. So Taco could basically burn a lot of time trying to deny this uh, this bomb plant. Fur can chuck it down on the lower ramp as soon as the smoke clears as well. 30 seconds left basically here. And at this point, it's when you just start throwing in the incendiaries. There's so little time left that if they are coming towards this B-side Astralis, 
You can have the nades in hand. Smoke just clearing now. Debris, that's the timing, and he's roasting alive. Furchuk does an incendiary, and now it's Astralis just trying to barrel through, but it's not gonna happen just yet. They are trading effectively, but the rotation coming through is gonna deny it, and it's just gonna be Glaive surviving to get onto the site itself with the bomb plant, yes. But a 1v3 on his hands. Cold, FNX, and Fallen still alive here for SK Gaming. He's sandwiched in. He has to go active here. He can't just wait. He has to go and find them. Otherwise, they're just going to circle in around him. And I think he knows it. He's walking underneath Fallen, spotting him out. And that's a great kill here. The Brazilian captain dragging his team, kicking and screaming back into this game. Triple kill for him. He's now at 24 total. He's overtaking everybody in this game. They had the flash. And Fallen was blind. Just had the angle. Got it right. Oh, man. Imagine if Sip just gets the spray down. Like if he continues to spray then, mm. Fallen could have also wiped, walked right into a shot. Bomb plant for Astralis is good, but it's not good enough to net them a full buy. So they're going to have to just wait a little bit. They do go for the halfway tech nine and smokes here. Wow, this is becoming a very, very intense game. This is just a, like a throwback to old train almost. It feels like when you play SK Gaming on train and they are on CT side, you will get two rounds in the half. <laughs> you, you will not score many rounds whatsoever, in fact. I, this, and now we have the reset on Astralis. They do have a little bit of money, but not a lot. Still willing to go for Tech 9 Kevlar. Some grenades here as well. And really, it's a matter of just getting this round out of the way. You have the setup already. You guys can see Kiarbi and Device ready to chuck those smokes in. Glaive and Zipnix are above Pop Dog as well, so they'll be able to get theirs in as well. Yeah, and what you... What you're hoping for in a round like this is actually that you can catch one or two people holding close to main. Someone by E-Box or someone uh, by the first train so you can close the distance with a tech nine and really run them down. But how do you do that when they're this far back? They're going to allow you to get closer and they'll shoot through the smoke and try and pick you off before it even gets to anything here. So that's the that's the challenge that Astralis are facing right now. They are out and a little bit of a missed shot from Fallen, but he still picks up the kill. And there you see, as they try and come through the smoke, they just get whittled down. No bomb plan either. Gabby drops and nobody dying from SK. And now taking a step closer to crushing the dreams of Astralis here. 14 to 12 is the scoreline. They've got to be in just, I mean, full panic mode right now, Astralis. I'm having trouble accepting just how good Fallen is right now. Like, that, that the deny through the smoke as well, just... With this AWP, he's just not missing. 27-0-16 for Fallen. The complete turnaround. Nearly 10 kills ahead of anybody else on this team. Called 0 at 18. And Kirby has clearly run out of Nitro. Because he had such a remarkable start, but now he's only had three kills, I guess. Maybe two this second half. Definitely needs to find himself here because his team need him desperately. Astralis in the lead, 14-12. to 12, But it really does feel like this is SK Gaming's map to lose now. It feels like everything is set up here for SK Gaming to close out this map and take it to Dust2, which is the third map in this best of three if necessary. Yeah, and that would be, uh, be a nightmare, but what an entrance. Taking down one, Taco in so much trouble. He's gonna go for the spray, but it doesn't work. And Dupree picks up FNX, just as you say it. It doesn't work out. Grenade gonna explode Cold Sierra. And now that leaves Fallen one versus four, and he drops the device. So That's um, all it took. I'll take 10% of the uh, prize money. You're welcome. The cast is first. Still strong. Still strong. <laughs> it just took that one entrance. And you see, as soon as SFNX goes down, it leaves Taco alone. And at the, in that exact position that he's in, look at this grenade. I mean, <laughs> Fallout has the time to contemplate that as well. At that know? point, at that point, Cold Zero should have just thrown himself at it. Say, this is for you, Captain. And then just gone up with it. 12 to 15 here. We have three. Match and map point here for um, for Astralis. They just need one more round, and they're going to go to the grand finals for the first time in a very long time. And especially against a team like SK, would be a tremendous performance here. Dupree going to be going down a refrag from Sipnix. They're going fast and hard out into the spawn side again. It hasn't worked so far in this half, but maybe it will this time. Not going to get the shot, and they fall off the train. Fallen. Just at the edge of the smoke, he's so clever right now. The flashes are in, but they're flashed on the other side. They can't capitalize on it. He's on the ladder, and he's going to be going down two versus three. And no bomb plan yet. Device will pick up the kill there on Cold Sierra. It leaves FNX and Taco. And Kierby, he's sneaking around the back. This might be this might be the game-winning move. He gets the spray down on Taco, and that leaves FNX 30 health. And in a one-on-two, how does he escape from this high ground position? As soon as they find out that he's there, he's trapped. 
He doesn't. He has to get lucky with the angle, and it's not going to happen, although he does get a very close to hitting the shot there on Kirby. Just fully commits to taking his step out into the open. Device is going to be able to shoulder peek him to death, however, and there it is. The headshot that does it. 16 to 12, and Astralis, they have done it. They've succeeded. They've made it to the grand finals of E-League Season 2. It has been so long since we've seen this Astralis, and Glaive can be proud. He has made the difference along with the rest of the team. What an improvement. An absolute eruption of emotion on the Astralis team as they pull through here. This has been a very long time coming for this team. They have fought very hard for it. They've had to make some hard sacrifices in the roster to try and make this work. And now it seems they finally found the solution. They are going to be in the grand finals, you're right. An unbelievable performance coming out of this squad. Let's we'll see if they can continue and we'll